Okay. All right, let's call the, the select board meeting to order. First up is organization of the board. This is uh, election of officers or role players, or whatever you want to call them. So we'll start out with a chair. I would like to nominate uh, Trini Brassard as chair for, of, the, of the select board. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, <laughs> now we are looking for a vice chair. Uh, I'll step up to that too. I'd like to nominate Larry Sackowitz as the vice chair. And, and uh, people should understand maybe why Larry can't participate this evening, I'm just saying. Um, but he has not yet been sworn in and he is out of town. So, um, uh, but I'd like to nominate Larry as the uh, vice chair for the next year. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Larry is on Zoom. Yep, yes. but he hasn't uh, taken uh, the yeah. oath, so he can't he's vote. Just, he's not able to nominate or yeah. vote. So, okay. hi there, Larry. <laughs> and now we're looking for a secretary clerk. The most prestigious. Yeah. I'll nominate Tom for that. <laughs> you are so close tonight. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and we are organized. Next up is public comment. This is comment on anything not on the agenda. Anybody? Anybody on the screen? Not seen anything. Great. Approval of the agenda. I move we approve the agenda as stated. I'm not aware of any conditions, correct? We don't have any changes for it. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That one sails through. Consent calendar. This is approval of meeting minutes and warrants. Just so you know, the warrants come in an email. We approve them so the checks can go out and keep flowing. And then at the board meeting, we ratify that decision. That's what warrants means. We'll try to walk you through it and not leave you like, what was that? <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, I move the uh, approval of the well of the consent agenda. Uh, do we want to do both A and B in one? Yep. Oh, that's what I thought. Here's so I'll move thing. the I'll move the uh, approval of the consent agenda, the meeting minutes of uh, two nine and two twenty seven, and the warrants. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the business agenda, and first up is town meeting review and discussion of next steps. So really, this is primarily about Article 5, which was the proposed police district budget. All the other budgets and articles passed, so those are set, those were the primary order of business. There are a couple of other business items at the end of the warning. We don't really have to do too much with any of them at any point, certainly soon. There was the tax exemption for the senior center. Those are, you can have an initial term of 10 years if you qualify, and then each successive term is five years in length, so they're into the five-year cycle, so voters approved that. That was in there, and then there's been an article about if we have any kind of surplus funds at the end of the year. Um, that's the same article that's appeared for a few years in a row. <clears throat> now, excuse me. Those get dumped into the paving reserve and the gravel road reserve. Whew. Just I get very emotional talking about surpluses. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> baby, straight in the fields. Um, and so that one's been pretty standard. We don't know that until the audited, you know, the year has ended and the audit's been completed, and then we know sort of hopefully which side of good we ended on. Um, and then those are going across, and there's a percentage assigned to those. So, those, but then you had the special appropriations. But that was really it. We didn't have any bonds or any sort of other resolutions. So it brings us back around to the one article that didn't pass, which was a budget article related to the police district. And so it's kind of a conceptual, where do you want to go? What could some next steps be type of conversation on that? We did include in the package just kind of a rough timeline for what happens when a budget vote doesn't pass. 
and that comes from state statute, and it's pretty similar to what we do in terms of warning town meeting and the process for it. There's a couple of different tweaks in there with timelines, but really it's about same 30 to 40 day window. Still have to have an informational meeting. There's still a vote at the end, and then some other warning pieces in terms of when things appear in papers, when things get posted, those types of things. Once we figure out some dates, if that's the direction, we'll add those in, work backwards from there, being mindful of some other things that don't show up on calendar, such as we need so many days to have absentee ballots available. Folks, so we'll work with Emory and his office on those pieces. But for now, it just sort of shows you if you start at step one and need to go to the end, what does statute say you have to do to get from, from here to there? As I've said today a couple of times, you're in a hallway with a number of doors. Let's make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> which door? Yeah, which doors would you like to choose? So it appears we've got two issues here. So <clears throat> if you follow front page forum, there's all kinds of reasons people voted no. It's, we know it's not the simple one of what's the budget or what one issue is. There was a lot of them. Um, but we, we've got a, a couple themes there. Um, one is whether the what the police district looks like with it is it the entire town is it a part of the town how does it get paid for we're not going to crack that nut in a couple days there's just it's too big um so i think that we have two questions one's the short-term solution what do we do to get through while we look at the bigger issue of what does policing look like and you know there's a lot of conversation that went forward um, even while we were doing this before you guys were part, but you know, is the answer regional even it's, you know, it's quite possible. The solution here isn't even just Randolph. It's a variety of towns. And I think that's sort of the area that was gaining the most steam as Trevor and I were doing the road show, looking for somebody to, to provide service. So I would almost think that the approach we need to look at is what's our short-term solution here and what's our long-term solution and how do we gear up to define what those two solutions look like and and how we go about you know going after what those are Trini for the benefit of some of us who are newer to Randolph or who have been here a long time but may not be aware of um, sort of the underpinnings of the merger of the town and the village some 40 years ago or more. Can you explain, and maybe Trevor, you could do this, what the process is for um, expanding the police district or dissolving it and creating a new one? Or uh, my understanding is that the, the um, village residents, the police district residents, and the town residents would have separate ballot initiatives relative to those decisions. Is that accurate? That fits the Secretary yep. of State's initial read on the Articles of Merger, right? Um, yeah, if you look at the Articles of Merger, there's a very defined paragraph about the police district. And mm -hmm. if you talk to the people that were part of it, and you look at the history of it, there was a lot of pushback from the town side on the merger because they didn't want to pay for police services. And if you look at what Randolph's makeup was at the time, it was mostly agriculture outside right. of the village area. Right. So you had a lot of farms that had large parcels of land that were paying sizable amounts of property taxes that didn't want to absorb the cost of a police department to cover farmland, basically. Right. And if you follow some of the back and forth that took place, there was a whole lot of distrust from both sides and whatnot. So you have this, you have it uh, spelled out in the Articles of Merger, the police district. And then there's another paragraph later on that talks about these special districts and what has to happen to expand them or remove them. So I think you're right that the only way to change the boundaries of the police district, if you will, is for those that are going to become part of that district to vote to join it. So I don't think it even has to be the whole town, you know, like Fish Hill and Hebert Hill could decide they want to join and petition the select board to join the police district. And then those residents would vote whether to join or not. And then the police district votes whether to allow them to join or not. So the simple solution of just <coughs> expanding 
the police district to the full town or even to a portion of the rest of the town isn't as cut and dry as people have suggested it would be. Not at all. Okay. I didn't think so. No. Nope. Nothing could be that easy. Uh, uh, don't we wish don't we wish it could have been? If I may, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um it sounds to me, my my understanding is that if indeed we did want to have a townwide police department, um, having a department would, would really just be a townwide police department would be just another line in our general budget, just like the rec department or any other part of our municipal government. So that actually would be the simplest way um, to do it. We wouldn't have to touch the police district. We would just add a department to our general budget and have the whole town vote on it. Um, I don't think you can get away with it that easy, Larry. It's pretty spelled out in there and police services are pretty well defined. I don't think you can take the intent of that merger and just say, well, we're gonna push it aside. We're gonna call it something else, put it in the budget and pass it to go townwide. Yeah. I think that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. I'd, I'd like to, I just, I would like to learn more about that just because it, the articles of of um, of merger are 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 pretty. They're pretty murky now. Um, it's it's not really it's not a terribly detailed document. I think there's a lot of room for potentially in, um, some sort of interpretation. I, I think we need to learn more about the sort of the background of those documents and how they would be how they would be interpreted legally. I, I don't know which lends itself to a short-term solution and a long-term solution. You know, if we decide, if we say that the vote that happened meant nobody wants police service in the village, then we're done with the topic. If we decide that it means there were some challenges with what was proposed and they want us to put together something else and come back, then anything we put back together to keep some level of service has to be done so that the service continues on July 1. And there's no way you're going to get through all the legal issues of the merger document and what that looks like and how that plays out and votes and all that for a July 1 start date. You know. my, my interpretation of the of the police district vote, and, and this is just my interpretation based upon what I saw and what I've what I've heard from folks. So it's not a scientific sample, but is that um, the predominant um, issue is that um, people felt as though it, it's just it's uh, that it's unfair for the police district to be shouldering the cost of police, and that um, you know basically any police budget we that we would come up with that would you know not spread out the burden um, would not be acceptable. We could we could try putting up a different police budget, but that's my interpretation of of what we saw happen. So you think we go with nothing until we have a long term solution? That might be our only option here. I, I, I mean, we could try putting a much smaller budget in front of the voters, but if the real reason why people didn't want them, didn't want uh, to pass that budget is because of the perceived unfairness of it, I don't see how that would help. I think you're gonna end up with, I, I just don't see a short-term solution that my, allows that. My concern is how we tee us up for an interim solution that leads to a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. um, I articulated that feeling at town meeting, and I'll reiterate it again tonight. I believe that the long-term solution here may rest in a regional. I do too. Uh, in, in a regional yep. police force, whether it's Braintree, Brookfield, Bethel, and us, or whatever that might look like, Williamstown, whatever that, that might look like. But we can't get there overnight and we have to deal with the reality of our situation today and in the coming weeks and months beyond July 1st. And that's what we should be focusing on, in my yep. opinion. Can you just, for careful clarification, reiterate what services are available? You have this July 1st cutoff, so what, what cuts off in July, on July 1st? There's no for, money. There's no money, so who, what do we have currently right now? Do we have Scott and the administrative assistant. Do we have no Randall? Because I know previously we discussed hiring one and one in an admin and you know the sheriff. So mm -hmm. are they actually hired, but not anymore after July first? Or 
Uh, it, Can you please chief and so sheriff just for clarification? And so there's um, right now there's money in the budget that was passed because we had funds to contract with the Orange County Sheriff for a level of service. Got it. So we were contracting, I believe it was 120 hours a week was what was used at a budgeted number. The thing that people got to understand is if you have an event that happens that requires more service, you're going to be over that 120, but your goal was not to go below it. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you look at budgets and, and volatility, police budgets are probably more volatile than mm -hmm. a lot of others that you have. Uh, when the Orange County Sheriff said, we don't have any staff, we can't do this anymore. There's still a budget remaining there. Okay. And so that would allow some level of service between now and June 30th. So the budget that we're talking about is what happens July 1 right. to get us through the next fiscal year while right. we try to figure out. And I don't believe we're gonna get there in one year. I don't, I don't see us getting through the whole, you know, what we're talking about and what some of the neighboring towns have expressed interest in is creating something similar to how we do solid waste districts and how we do ambulance services and whatnot, where you all agree on kind of what it looks like and how you allocate those costs between the, the towns that are benefiting from the service. And currently, and gets, do we have anyone paying any? There's talk of asking like Claire Martin or the school or Gifford to pitch in any money towards that. Is any of that happening? Well, no, that's part of, so you, some of what I don't know if folks understand, like if we look at the timeline for how this all came down, um, there was a there was conversation taking place because uh, Orange County Sheriff provided our dispatch service, and the side judges said, "Hey, we're not going to provide eight hours of coverage overnight, and we don't have very much luck scheduling fires and incidents, right? So we got to have 24-hour coverage." that started the conversation with dispatch services of, you know, who can do what, how do we gotta have this? There's no, we didn't have any choice. As that was taking place, the election took place, Contois was elected, his, you know, if you didn't, his discussion coming up through was all about contracted services, not doing them, what he was gonna do. There was some conversation with him after he was elected, um, what he told me was, I'm headed to Arizona. I'll be back for February 1 to get sworn in. I'll talk to you after that. That's not a good place to be to begin with. Then you hear that they're all resigning. You know, the guy worked there for 20 years. The sheriffs are all resigning. You don't get a warm and fuzzy there either. It's irresponsible just to sit back and say, we'll see what happens February 1. So that's when the conversation started with well, we were signing the documents with Barry City. I'm like, they said, well, is there anything else we can help you with? I'm like, yeah, you want to provide some police service? <laughs> Trevor threw in, we have a building with some charm. <laughs> and we still couldn't get them. <laughs> but they've got the same challenges. You know, the, we talked with the state police. The staffing is the big issue. Like, they didn't, nobody had the capacity to provide what we were looking for, or what we felt was needed. and. That was at the level of service we were already getting. So that's kind of what led us to this. February 1 happens. February 3rd? February 2nd, 36 hours in, I get a call that says, hey, you've been unstaffed this whole time, by the way, and we don't have sufficient staffing to cancel the contract. We can't even provide you the 30-day notice it's in writing. So all of this kind of fits in that same continuum. At that point, we're talking about this budget, this budget, what do you need to provide 120 hours of police service? That's a number that came out of the 2018 era conversation. How do we fix the short-term solution? And then embedded or included on top of that, we spent a lot of time talking about July 1, but as of functionally February 1st, we were without a level of coverage that we were expecting. State police have tried to step in to the extent they can. There's two folks here who can provide some insight on what they've been able to do, what are the, some of the things they've been sort of facing for call volume, what are the actual calls that are coming in, and what we can expect for them in the long term as well, which is going to be pretty minimal uh, based on some of their staffing and other needs. And so we're also trying to figure out what do services look like in the short term. We have started to hire up. We went to get something called an ORI reactivated. That's essentially our access to all of the criminal information systems. It's a key piece to be able to get up and running and provide police services again. 
we were just notified we were reactivated at the federal level on March 6th, maybe. And then with the budget vote and the media coverage of it, we were then notified that we've been put on hold again. So we're not even able at this point, even though that all our eyes reactivated, even though Scott's a fully certified law enforcement officer, we're not able to do anything until that piece is resolved as well. And some of that piece is tied into what do we do in the short term. And so one of the things we're going to have to talk about, this is really at the state level, is we have a budget, we have money approved through June 30. Can that at least change the equation for the fiscal year we're in? while we figure out what it looks like after July 1. And so there are those sort of competing pressures of what do we look like super short term, sort of near short term, <laughs> mid term, and then long term. And if you're talking about regional policing, I think you'd be thinking at least a couple of year out, years out. This is something that doesn't have a precedent really. Some of the regional efforts have been smaller, focused on dispatching, and they either haven't come to fruition or in the central Vermont example, they just were dissolved. We voted in Montpelier whether or not to, to pull the city out and, and, and to approve the dissolution of the public safety authority there. Um, but it does seem like when you think about everything that's happening across public safety sectors, and we are gonna, gonna probably see it at some point with like tax assessment services. At some point we may have to band together um, in order to try to provide these things, but that's a couple of years. You've gotta find an equitable measure to pay, something that everybody agrees to get voter buy-in. So we think long-term there's at least two years, that might even be a little optimistic. I, I was telling some folks, I worked for about five years in Essex, long before they split, when they were still trying to figure out if it was together or apart. And to fix a 40 year building problem related to the police department, we took two years to pick a site that everybody could agree on. And then everything had to roll forward from there. So these things take the time they take. And that's just to try to put a realistic frame on it. Wouldn't be, we're going regional, we need a couple of months. And we're going to be jamming just to have right. labor. Yeah. If you look at so this is a, that, that's rooted in the, in the um, village town dynamic. I, I, what you're describing in Essex, that's yeah. sort of a building had to go on inability that. to yeah one side um, of the line or the other to move forward. Yeah, judiciously yeah. is rooted in that. Well, it takes time to talk through those pieces. It's kind yeah. of the whether we're talking regional, whether we're talking some other solution that needs to break down some kind of historic stuff or to really change in order of events, that kind of takes some time. Well, I, I would have guessed that the funding side of this is going to be the bigger discussion, right? The, the towns like Brookfield that don't have a large business community and, and those type of things, their, their desire to pay is going to be lower than ours or lower than Williamstown. So yeah, they're going to have so. similar dynamic there to what the town has right. here in terms of... Right, we're just going to yeah. multiply it because we think it's so much fun right now. Right. <laughs> would it be appropriate to hear from our state police representatives yep. at, sure. if this would be a good time for that? Would you yeah, like so, to? so I'm here to more answer questions than to necessarily give a presentation on, um, but I can give you some numbers which are real things right out of our system that attracts from crime in response is to call in town. I don't have it broken between the village and the town because our system doesn't work that way. I'd have to go through all 7,000 calls over the past year and, and pick them out what road, what address, and that's just not. So this morning I just I ran some numbers and these are rough numbers. So the Sheriff's Department from the first of from January 1st of 2022 to current, took 2,300 calls of service for the town of Randolph. So I'd say those are, a high percentage of those were in the village because we're at their contracting with you. In that same time frame, we took roughly 1,000. So us as the state police in Royalton, we cover 18 towns. We took 7,200 calls in that period of time entirety. And a thousand of those were, were to your town. And you're talking about 18 towns. So your percentage of calls in your town, and that's just for us. So you're talking about 33, 3,400 calls in the town of Randolph total. And this is removing, so we don't cover Hartford or Norwich, I remove those out of the equation. So these are calls that we have full coverage as police agencies and then Royalton that we are covering. So. That's a lot. 
you guys have a lot of calls, and those are those aren't car stops. Those aren't officers doing, you know, being effectively being there so people see them. This is actual calls for service that your town has. It's very high for this region. Our ability to take on 2,300 calls, we don't have that ability. So the thousand calls we've covered over the past year, you know, us as an agency with our staffing levels, our troopers take about 600 calls a year, six, 650 calls a year. That's up from 350 calls a year about four or five years ago. Because this, this, this is more things occurring. We're seeing it, more stuff's flowing into the state, more crime, more of these bigger things. Because a lot of that becomes a problem with, because our proactivity lessens, right? So you're not, you don't have somebody sitting on Main Street, a police car or a police officer, walking around. People see that, that deters crime over time. So it's not just that response for calls. Any questions on any of that stuff? Can you just explain so people understand? We decide to disband the police department and have no department. What does that do to response times and the types of events you can respond to? We can res respond to emergency calls. So things like, I have a bad check. You know, these things that are not life safety issues, we do not have the capability to come into those. That's what you get from a police department. Property disputes, things like that, that we just don't have the capacity to take on are things that we're not, we, we just, we can't. We have three people working to cover 18 towns. Most of the time it's three troopers on at a time. We just don't have the capacity to handle all those things that you're getting in, a, you know, good service. So of those thousand over and above what the sheriff uh, serves staff handled in the past since the beginning of 2022, are you able to differentiate the levels of I don't know how else to put this, the levels of severity of those. So I broke it out a little bit in, in types of calls. So for us, we took about 30 domestics. So that's like a domestic assault type call, family fight. Um, 30 911 calls, six assault calls, 15 mental health calls, 87 suspicious calls. That can vary, that can range from somebody's out in front of my house to I saw something like it, it can be a criminal call or it's a, Sometimes it's not. 42 thefts, 45 welfare or suicide checks. Those calls can be very entailed and can take a long time to deal with. Um, four juvenile problems, three citizens dispute, and then you know we you know there's a list of 50 things we come to, but those are kind of the heavy hitters that most people most people see. I don't have the arrest numbers mm -hmm. with me today. Well, that's that's helpful information. And I can provide like a more detailed thing for the select board that I can give you, you know, more of a breakdown and things that you can see, locations and things like that, and give you a, a more overall and more details if that's things that you needed. Would you be able to provide ones to the school system, the hospital, and that kind of stuff? Maybe. Okay. So this it depends on the ad. Like sometimes those places have multiple address. It would take some time. I could probably get that information, but it would take me a little while to get does that the, flushed out. Does your system that tracks all this, is it able to, can we download that data into GIS mm -hmm. to create a map? That I don't know, thing? but I can get an answer for you. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. give me a, like an email on what that is, or have, he can reach out to me and we can work and, through some um, of that. It might be interesting to just sort of see a map of kind of where where this is. Where so a lot of it I can pull into an Excel spreadsheet, that's how we do it. Yep. And then I can categorize and dice it. So if it's that's, it can go from that I Excel can take that. I got somebody that can take that. And then I, into then you should be able to that. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want on? Do we want on? What's going to be, what do people think the path forward is here what is the short term what do you want to do do we want to give some a lot of underbrush to clear <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think coming at it from a place of positivity rather than just assuming that every town is going to go going to vote no and every person is going to be 
not willing to provide, especially with the statistics that we're going to have coming in. I think being overly transparent, we're in a weird cultural environment right now. You know, our school systems are at risk, you know, hospitals are, you know, overburdened with mental health and all that kind of stuff. I think if we come at it from a place of what can we do as a community to make sure that, you know, we proactively, like he said, provide these services in a way in the future to make sure that they all come together cohesively, whether it takes two years or not, having those stepping stones available and not just saying, well, Brookfield doesn't have this, so we're not even, you know, we want to at least provide them the opportunity to show them that we want them to be a part of it and, you know, their kids come to our school here in Orange County, so we want to make sure, you know, that everybody's covered and everybody not necessarily gets to have their opinion, right, but has a solution-oriented mindset. So, you know, we've seen a lot on Front Porch Forum that everybody has these issues that they want said, and hopefully they'll start coming to the select board meetings and, you know, being a part of the information output as well as the input. And that's, you know, the two-way communication that I'd really like to start seeing in order to get the short-term to turn into a long-term. Um, again, the place of positivity and really reaching out to see who possibly would be interested instead of just assuming that nobody wants to be interested. Oh, I think there's a lot of people interested. Yeah. I think you're going to have to, you're, if we're going to move something forward on the long-term solution, that's going to take creating a, a working group Yeah. and reaching out to these municipalities of, you know, do you want to send a, a person in an alternate or right. like how, because you, you also don't want a 75 person team trying to create a solution oh, too absolutely. so you you know you wanted but i think the, the more direction we need to figure out tonight is what's the short term look like do we go with nothing for a few years or do we go with a scaled down version you know we got to give trevor some direction on what to create you know think, what that looks like i think some of the issue that happened was um not having data there was no crime data so All right, let's call the, the select board meeting to order. First up is organization of the board. This is uh, election of officers or role players, or whatever you want to call them. So we'll start out with a chair. I would like to nominate uh, Trini Brissard as chair for, of, the, of the select board. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, <laughs> now we are looking for a vice chair. Uh, I'll step up to that, too. I'd like to nominate Larry Sackowitz as the vice chair. And, and uh, people should understand maybe why Larry can't participate this evening, I'm just saying. Um, but he has not yet been sworn in, and he is out of town. So, um, uh, but I'd like to nominate Larry as the uh, vice chair for the next year. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Larry is on Zoom. Yep. Yes. But he hasn't uh, taken uh, the yeah. oath, so he can't he's vote. Just, he's not able to nominate or yeah. vote. So, okay. hi there, Larry. <laughs> and now we're looking for a secretary clerk. The most prestigious. Yeah. yeah. I'll nominate Tom for that. You are so close tonight. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and we are organized. Next up is public comment. This is comment on anything not on the agenda. Anybody? Anybody on the screen? Not seeing anything. Great. Approval of the agenda. I move we approve the agenda as stated. I'm not aware of any conditions, correct? We don't have any changes for it. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That one sails through. Consent calendar. This is approval of meeting minutes and warrants. Just so you know, the warrants come in an email. 
we approve them so the checks can go out and keep flowing and then at the board meeting we ratify that decision that's what warrants means we'll try to walk you through it and not leave you like what was that <laughs> what are they doing <laughs> Uh, I move the uh, approval of the well of the consent agenda. Uh, do we want to do both A and B in one? Yep. That's what I thought. There's so I'll move thing. the I'll move the uh, approval of the consent agenda, the meeting minutes of uh, two nine and two twenty seven, and the warrants. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Next up is the business agenda, and first up is town meeting review and discussion of next steps. So really, this is primarily about Article 5, which was the proposed lease district budget. All the other budgets and articles passed, so those are set. Those were the primary order of business. There are a couple of other business items at the end of the warning. We don't really have to do too much with any of them at any point. Certainly soon there was the tax exemption for the senior center. Those are, you can have an initial term of 10 years if you qualify, and then each successive term is five years in length, so they're into the five-year cycle, so voters approved that. That was in there, and then there's been an article about if we have any kind of surplus funds at the end of the year. Um, that's the same article that's appeared for a few years in a row. <clears throat> now, excuse me, those get dumped into the paving reserve and the gravel road reserve. Whew. I get very emotional talking about surpluses. Paying <laughs> <laughs> paving is straight in the fields. Um, and so that one's been pretty standard. We don't know that until the audited, you know, the year has ended and the audit's been completed, and then we know sort of hopefully which side of good we ended on. Um, and then those have gone across, and there's a percentage assigned to those. So those but, and then you had the special appropriations. But that was really it. We didn't have any bonds or any sort of other resolutions. So it brings us back around to the one article that didn't pass, which was a budget article related to the police district. And so really it's kind of a conceptual, where do you want to go, what could some next steps be type of conversation on that. We did include in the package just kind of a rough timeline for what happens when a budget vote doesn't pass. And that comes from state statute. And it's pretty similar to what we do in terms of warning town meeting and the process for it. There's a couple of different tweaks in there with timelines. But really, it's about same 30 to 40 day window. Still have to have an informational meeting. There's still a vote at the end. And then some other warning pieces in terms of when things appear in papers, when things get posted, those types of things. Once we figure out some dates, if that's the direction, we'll add those in, work backwards from there, being mindful of some other things that don't show up on the calendar, such as we need so many days to have absentee ballots available. Folks will work with Emory and his office on those pieces. But for now, it just sort of shows you if you start at step one and need to go to the end, what does statute say you have to do to get from, from here to there? As I've said today a couple of times, you're in a hallway with a number of doors. So that, let's make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> which door, yeah, which doors would you like to choose? So it appears we've got two issues here. So if you follow front page forum, there's all kinds of reasons people voted no. So we know it's not the simple one of what's the budget or what one issue is. There was a lot of them. Um, but we, we've got a, a couple themes there. Um, one is whether the, what the police district looks like. Is it, is it the entire town? Is it a part of the town? How does it get paid for? We're not going to crack that nut in a couple days. There's just, it's too big. Um, so I think that we have two questions. One's the short-term solution. What do we do to get through while we look at the bigger issue of what does policing look like? And, you know, there's a lot of conversation that went forward um, even while we were doing this before you guys were part. But, you know, is the answer regional even? It's, you know, it's quite possible the solution here isn't even just Randolph. It's a variety of towns and I think that's sort of the area that was gaining the most steam as Trevor and I were doing the road show looking for somebody to to provide service so I would almost think that the approach we need to look at is what's our short-term solution here and what's our long-term solution and how do we gear up to define what those two solutions look like and and how we go about 
you know, going after what those are. Trini, for the, the benefit of some of us who are newer to Randolph or who have been here a long time but may not be aware of um, sort of the underpinnings of the merger of the town and the village some 40 years ago or more, can you explain, and maybe Trevor, you could do this, what the process is for um, expanding the police district or dissolving it and creating a new one? Or uh, my understanding is that the, the um, village residents, the police district residents, and the town residents would have separate ballot initiatives relative to those decisions. Is that accurate? That fits the Secretary yep. of State's initial read on the Articles of Merger, right? Um, yeah, if you look at the Articles of Merger, there's a very defined paragraph about the police district. And mm -hmm. if you talk to the people that were part of it, and you look at the history of it, there was a lot of pushback from the town side on the merger because they didn't want to pay for police services. And if you look at what Randolph's makeup was at the time, it was mostly agriculture outside right. of the village area. Right. So you had a lot of farms that had large parcels of land that were paying sizable amounts of property taxes that didn't want to absorb the cost of a police department to cover farmland, basically. Right. And if you follow some of the back and forth that took place, there was a whole lot of distrust from both sides and whatnot. So you have this, you have it uh, spelled out in the Articles of Merger, the police district. And then there's another paragraph later on that talks about these special districts and what has to happen to expand them or remove them. So I think you're right that the only way to change the boundaries of the police district, if you will, is for those that are going to become part of that district to vote to join it. So I don't think it even has to be the whole town, you know, like Fish Hill and Hebert Hill could decide they want to join and petition the select board to join the police district and then those residents would vote whether to join or not, and then the police district votes whether to allow them to join or not. Wow. So the simple solution of just <coughs> expanding the police district to the full town or even to a portion of the rest of the town isn't as cut and dry as people have suggested it would be? Not at all. Okay. I didn't think so. Nope. Thanks. Nothing could be that easy. Uh, uh, don't, we wish, don't we wish it could have been? If I may, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it sounds to me, my, my understanding is that if indeed we did want to have a townwide police department, um, having a department would, would really just be a townwide police department would be just another line in our general budget, just like the rec department or any other part of our municipal government. So that actually would be the simplest way um, to do it. We wouldn't have to touch the police district, we would just add a department to our general budget and have the whole town vote on it. Um, I don't think you can get away with it that easy, Larry. It's pretty spelled out um, in there, and police services are pretty well defined. I don't think you can take the intent of that merger and just say, well, we're going to push it aside, we're going to call it something else, put it in the budget, and pass it to go townwide. I think that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. It would be a lawsuit. I'd like to, I, just, I would like to learn more about that just because it, the articles of, of, um, of merger are, are, are pretty, they're pretty murky mess. Um, it's, it's not really, it's not a terribly detailed document. I think there's a lot of room for potentially in, um, some sort of interpretation. I, I think we need to learn more about the sort of the background of those documents and how they would be, how they would be interpreted legally. I, I don't know which lends itself to a short-term solution and a long-term solution. You know, if we decide, if we say that the vote that happened meant nobody wants police service in the village, then we're done with the topic. If we decide that it means there were some challenges with what was proposed and they want us to put together something else and come back, then anything we put back together to keep some level of service has to be done so that the service continues on July 1. And there's no way you're going to get through all the legal issues of the merger document and what that looks like and how that plays out and votes and all that for a July 1 start date. 
Yeah. My, my interpretation of the of the three sister vote, and this is just my interpretation based on what I saw and what I've what I've heard from folks. So it's not a scientific example, but is that um, the predominant um, issue is that uh, people felt as though it's just it's uh, that it's unfair for the police district to be shouldering the cost of police, and that. Um, you know, basically any police budget we, that we would come up with that would, you know, not spread out the burden um, would not be acceptable. We could, we could try putting up a different police budget, but that's my interpretation of, of what we saw happen. So you think we go with nothing until we have a long-term solution? That might be our only option here. I, I, I mean, I, we could try putting a much smaller budget in front of the voters, but if the real reason why people didn't want them, didn't want uh, to pass that budget is because of the perceived unfairness of it, I don't see how that would help. I think you're gonna end up with, I, I just don't see a short-term solution that my, allows that. My concern is how we tee us up for an interim solution that leads to a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. um, I articulated that feeling at town meeting, and I'll reiterate it again tonight. I believe that the long-term solution here may rest in a regional. I do too. Uh, in, in a regional yep. police force, whether it's Braintree, Brookfield, Bethel, and us, or whatever that might look like, Williamstown, whatever that might look like. But we can't get there overnight, and we have to deal with the reality of our situation today and in the coming weeks and months beyond July 1st. And that's what we should be focusing on, in my yep. opinion. Can you just, for careful clarification, reiterate what services are available? You have this July 1st cutoff. So what what cuts off in July on July 1st? There's no for, money. There's no money. So who? what do we have currently right now? Do we have Scott and the administrative assistant? Do we have no Randall? Because I know Previously, we discussed hiring one and one, and an admin and you know the sheriff. So, are they actually hired, but not anymore after July first, or? Uh, it, it increased chief and so sheriff. Just for clarification. And so there's um, right now there's money in the budget that was passed because we had funds to contract with the Orange County Sheriff for a level of service. Got it. So we were contracting. I believe it was 120 hours a week was what was used at a budgeted number. The thing that people got to understand is if you have an event that happens that requires more service, you're going to be over that 120, but your goal was not to go below it. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you look at budgets and, and volatility, police budgets are probably more volatile than mm -hmm. a lot of others that you have. Uh, when the Orange County Sheriff said, we don't have any staff, we can't do this anymore, there's still a budget remaining there. Okay. And so that would allow some level of service between now and June 30th. So the budget that we're talking about is what happens so July 1 right. to get us through the next fiscal year while right. we try to figure out, and I don't believe we're gonna get there in one year. I don't, I don't see us getting through the whole, you know, what we're talking about and what some of the neighboring towns have expressed interest in is creating something similar to how we do solid waste districts and how we do ambulance services and whatnot where you all agree on kind of what it looks like and how you allocate those costs between the, the towns that are benefiting from the service. And currently, and gets, do we have anyone paying in? There's talk of asking like Claire Martin or the school or Gifford to pitch in any money towards that. Is any of that happening? Well, no, that's part of, so you, some of what, I don't know if folks understand, like if we look at the timeline for how this all came down, um, there was a there was conversation taking place because uh, Orange County Sheriff provided our dispatch service and the side judges said hey we're not going to provide eight hours of coverage overnight and we don't have very much luck scheduling fires and incidents right so we got to have 24-hour coverage that started the conversation with dispatch services of you know who can do what how do we got to have this there's no we didn't have any choice as that was taking place, the election took place. Contois was elected. His, you know, if you, his discussion coming up through was all about contracted services, not doing them 
what he was going to do. There was some conversation with him after he was elected. Um, what he told me was, I'm headed to Arizona. I'll be back for February 1 to get sworn in. I'll talk to you after that. That's not a good place to be to begin with. Then you hear that they're all resigning. You know, the guy worked there for 20 years. The sheriffs are all resigning. You don't get a warm and fuzzy there either. It's irresponsible just to sit back and say, we'll see what happens February 1. So that's when the conversation started with, well, we were signing the documents with Barry City. I'm like, they said, well, is there anything else we can help you with? I'm like, yeah, you want to provide some police service? <laughs> Trevor threw in, we have a building with some charm. <laughs> we still couldn't get them. <laughs> but they've got the same challenges. You know, the, we talked with the state police, the staffing is the big issue. Like they didn't, nobody had the capacity to provide what we were looking for or what we felt was needed. And that was at the level of service we were already getting. So that's kind of what led us to this. February 1 happens, February 3rd? February 2nd, 36 hours in, I get a call that says, hey, you've been unstaffed this whole time, by the way. And we don't have sufficient staffing to cancel the contract. We can't even provide you the 30 day notice it's in writing. So all of this kind of fits in that same continuum. At that point, we're talking about this budget, this budget, what do you need to provide 120 hours of police service? That's a number that came out of the 2018 era conversation. How do we fix the short-term solution? And then embedded or included on top of that, we spent a lot of time talking about July 1, but as of functionally February 1st, we were without a level of coverage that we were expecting. The state police have tried to step in to the extent they can. There's two folks here who can provide some insight on what they've been able to do, what are the, some of the things that they've been sort of facing for call volume, what are the actual calls that are coming in, and what we can expect for them in the long term as well, which is going to be pretty minimal uh, based on some of their staffing and other needs. And so we're also trying to figure out what do services look like in the short term. We have started to hire up. We went to get something called an ORI reactivated. That's essentially our access to all of the criminal information systems. It's a key piece to be able to get up and running and provide police services again. We were just notified we were reactivated at the federal level on March 6th, maybe. And then with the budget vote and the media coverage of it, we were then notified that we've been put on hold again. So we're not even able at this point, even though that ORI is reactivated, even though Scott's a fully certified law enforcement officer, we're not able to do anything until that piece is resolved as well. And some of that piece is tied into what do we do in the short term. And so one of the things we're gonna to have to talk about, this is really at the state level, is we have a budget, we have money approved through June 30. Can that at least change the equation for the fiscal year we're in while we figure out what it looks like after July 1? And so there are those sort of competing pressures of what do we look like super short term, sort of near short term, <laughs> mid term, and then long term. And if you're talking about regional policing, I think you'd be thinking at least a couple of year out, years out. This is something that doesn't have a precedent, really. Some of the regional efforts have been smaller, focused on dispatching, and they either haven't come to fruition, or in the central Vermont example, they just were dissolved. Um, you know, we voted in Montpelier whether or not to, to pull the city out and, and, and to approve the dissolution of the public safety authority there. Um, but it does seem like when you think about everything that's happening across public safety sectors, and we are gonna, gonna probably see it at some point with like tax assessment services. At some point we may have to band together um, in order to try to provide these things, but that's a couple of years. You've gotta find an equitable measure to pay, something that everybody agrees to, get voter buy-in. So when you think long-term, there's at least two years. That might even be a little optimistic. I, I was telling some folks, I worked for about five years in Essex, long before they split, when they were still trying to figure out if it was together or apart. And to fix a 40-year building problem related to the police department, we took two years to pick a site that everybody could agree on. And then everything had to roll forward from there. So these things take the time they take. And that's just to try to put a realistic frame on it. Wouldn't be, we're going regional, we need a couple of months, and we're gonna be jamming just after right. Labor Day. Yeah. If you look at so what we- that, That's rooted in the, in the um, Village town dynamic. I, I, what you're describing in Essex, that's yeah. sort of a building had to go on inability one, to yeah one side um, of the line or the other to move forward. Yeah, judiciously yeah. is rooted in that. Well, it takes time to talk and through those pieces. It's yeah. kind of the whether we're talking regional, whether we're talking some other solution. 
that needs to break down some kind of historic stuff or to really change an order of events, that kind of takes some time. Well, I, I would guess that the funding side of this is going to be the bigger discussion, right? The, the towns like Brookfield that don't have a large business community and, and those type of things, their, their desire to pay is going to be lower than ours or lower than Williamstown. So. Yeah, they're going to have a similar dynamic there to what the town has right. here in terms of... Right, we're just going to yeah. multiply it because we think it's so much fun right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> would it be appropriate to hear from our state police representatives yep. that, sure. if this would be a good time for that? Would you yeah, like so, to... so I'm here to more answer questions than to necessarily give a presentation on, um, but I can give you some numbers which are real things right out of our system that, that tracks from crime in responses to calls in town. I don't have it broken between the village and the town because our system doesn't work that way. I'd have to go through all 7,000 calls over the past year and, and pick them out, what road, what address, and that's just not. So this morning I just I ran some numbers, and these are rough numbers. So the Sheriff's Department from the 1st of from January 1st of 2022 to current, took 2,300 calls of service for the town of Randolph. So I'd say those are a high percentage of those were in the village because we're at their contracting with you. In that same time frame, we took roughly 1,000. So us as the state police in Royalton, we cover 18 towns. We took 7,200 calls in that period of time entirety. And a thousand of those were, were to your town. And you're talking about 18 towns. So your percentage of calls in your town, and that's just for us. So you're talking about 33, 3,400 calls in the town of Randolph total. And this is removing, so we don't cover Hartford or Norwich, I remove those out of the equation. So these are calls that we have full coverage as police agencies and then Royalton that we are covering. So. That's a lot. You guys have a lot of calls. And those aren't, those aren't car stops. Those aren't officers doing, you know, being effectively being there so people see them. This is actual calls for service that your town has. It's very high for this region. Our ability to take on 2,300 calls, we don't have that ability. So the 1,000 calls we've covered over the past year, you know, us as an agency with our staffing levels. Our troopers take about 600 calls a year, six, 650 calls a year. That's up from 350 calls a year about four or five years ago. Because this, this, this is more things occurring. We're seeing it, more stuff's flowing into the state, more crime, more of these bigger things. Because a lot of that becomes a problem with, because our proactivity lessens, right? So you're not, you don't have somebody sitting on Main Street, a police car or a police officer, walking around. People see that, that deters crime over time. So it's not just that response for calls. Any questions on any of that stuff? Can you just explain so people understand, we decide to disband the police department and have no department. What does that do to response times and the types of events you can respond to? We can res respond to emergency calls. So things like, I have a bad check. You know, these things that are not life safety issues, we do not have the capability to come into those. That's what you get from a police department. Property disputes, things like that, that we just don't have the capacity to take on are things that we're not, we, we just, we can't. We have three people working to cover 18 towns. Most of the time it's three troopers on at a time. We just don't have the capacity to handle all those things that you're getting in, a, you know, good service. So of those thousand over and above what the sheriff uh, serves staff handled in the past since the beginning of 2022, are you able to differentiate the levels of I don't know how else to put this, the levels of severity of those. So I broke it out a little bit in, in types of calls. So for us, we took about 30 domestics. So that's like a domestic assault type call, family fight. Um, 30 911 calls, six assault calls, 
15 mental health calls, 87 suspicious calls. That can vary, that can range from somebody's out in front of my house to I saw something like it, it can be a criminal call or it's a, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. 42 thefts, mm -hmm. 45 welfare or suicide checks. Mm -hmm. Those calls can be very entailed and can take a long time to deal with. Um, four juvenile problems, three citizens dispute. And then, you know, we, you know, there's a list of 50 things we come to. But those are kind of the heavy hitters that most people, most people see. I don't have the arrest numbers mm -hmm. with me today. Well, that's, that's helpful information. And I can provide like a more detailed thing for the select board that I can give you, you know, more of a breakdown of things that you can see, locations and things like that, and give you a, a more overall and more details if that's things that you needed. Would you be able to provide ones to the school system, the hospital, and that kind of stuff? Maybe. Okay. So this, it depends on the ad, like sometimes those places have multiple address. It would take some time. I could probably get that information, but it would take me a little while to get does that the, flushed out. Does your system that tracks all this, is it able to, can we download that data into GIS mm -hmm. to create a map? That I don't know, thing. but I can get an answer for you. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. give me a, like an email on what that is, or have, he can reach out to me and we can work and, through some of that. It might be interesting to just sort of see a map of kind of where where this is where so a lot of it i can pull into an excel spreadsheet that's how we do it yep and then i can categorize and dice them so if it's that's it can go from that i can excel take that i got somebody that can take that and then put I, it into then a you should be able to that. Yeah. yep okay okay anybody else do you want on do we want on what's going to be what do people think the path forward is here? What is the short term? What do you want to do? Do we want to give some? A lot of underbrush to clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think coming at it from a place of positivity rather than just assuming that every town is going to go going to vote no and every person is going to be not willing to provide, especially with the statistics that we're going to have coming in. I think being overly transparent we're in a weird cultural environment right now you know our school systems are at risk you know hospitals are you know overburdened with mental health and all that kind of stuff i think if we come at it from a place of what can we do as a community to make sure that you know we proactively like he said provide these services in a way in the future to make sure that they all come together cohesively whether it takes two years or not having those stepping stones available and not just saying, well, Brookfield doesn't have this, so we're not even, you know, we want to at least provide them the opportunity to show them that we want them to be a part of it. And, you know, their kids come to our school here in Orange County, so we want to make sure, you know, that everybody's covered and everybody not necessarily gets to have their opinion, right, but has a solution-oriented mindset. So. You know, we've seen a lot on Front Porch Forum that everybody has these issues that they want said, and hopefully they'll start coming to the select board meetings and, you know, being a part of the information output as well as the input. And that's, you know, the two-way communication that I'd really like to start seeing in order to get the short term to turn into a long term. Um, again, the place of positivity and really reaching out to see who possibly would be interested instead of just assuming that nobody wants to be interested. Oh, I think there's a lot of people interested. Yeah. I think you're going to have to, if we're going to move something forward on a long-term solution, that's going to take creating a, a working group Yeah. and reaching out to these municipalities of, you know, do you want to send a, a person in an alternate or right. like how, because you, you also don't want a 75 person team trying to create a solution oh, too. So you, you know, you want to, but I think the, the more direction we need to figure out tonight is what's the short term look like? Do we go with nothing for a few years or do we go with a scaled down version? You know, we got to give Trevor some direction on what to create, you know, think, what that looks like. I think some of the issue that happened was um, not having data. There was no crime data. 
And so it was really easy for people to say, I've never experienced crime, so crime doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I've That's heard crazy. that a lot. a lot. And it's I think it comes from a place of privilege and arrogance of not knowing what's really happening in our town. Mm -hmm. And that swayed a lot of people to think, well, I just want my taxes to go up and there's no crime. And um, in, that the select board hasn't been transparent. And the reason why it wasn't transparent is because it happened fast. Um, so it didn't have a lot of time for there to be a public discussion. It wasn't anyone's fault, it just was the timing of it. Um, and I'm wondering how many of those people would now say like, oh, like look at these numbers of things that are actually happening in our town. Um, understanding the reality that there is no other option. Um, to So either we do something now or we have nothing for maybe even two years. Um, and kind of getting that information out there in front of the gossip and that sort of thing that kind of happened, I think. And we really, it doesn't seem like we could do much outside of taxing the village for this. Is that correct? I don't see it. I think it's a heavy lift. I mean, one of the things we need to do is go back to those articles of merger, kind of a standard operating procedure. The next step would be let's consult our municipal attorney, say, what did he say? What do you think? So that they can dig in and say, case law statute, combine all of these things and provide us with some level of here's what we think you are and what it would take to change these boundaries, to eliminate them, to do all of those pieces. Um, in a very quick manner yeah. in order to get something No, it's not going to be quick. Exactly. A legal opinion on this is not going to come quick because it's not very clear and it's... Yeah. And the terminology is a little interesting. Rare. Special service district that's in the articles of merger isn't necessarily the framing for some of the other special districts there are, um, union municipal districts or fire districts, some of these other things that have been around for a while that have that taxing authority. You might see those. There's some clear lines around those. So it's also, do we consider this one of those? Does it follow that kind of protocol? Is it something different? Realistically, if we were to move down the path of exploring a vote by the residents of the village and the residents of the town around the boundaries of or the very existence of the police district, how long might that take? I mean, I, I'm asking, a, you know, yeah. I know I'm asking it out of left field question, but just do you have a sense of how, how complicated that? I think it will depend a little bit on what that guidance is coming back, so sort of, because mm -hmm. that will lay out what that process is. But, but then it also assumes that we enter that with some sort of unanimity around what whatever that direction looks like. And so if you're gonna go from the footprint we have to a townwide, you're not talking about taking the model that went out and just blowing the boundaries out and suddenly that's gonna cover everything. Mm -hmm. There was, we found a report in doing some of this digging from around 2003 to 2004 that somebody internally did that looked at, do you need to expand your level of resource if you expand your level of coverage? So whether or not we're adding bodies, cruisers, any of these things in order to cover all that ground in that kind of cohesive manner as opposed to trying to expand coverage almost in a contract manner with yeah. some of the money that's in general. So it's also part of it is are we unified in sort of what that direction is, can build a budget, build a framework around that and know what it is. So it, it, there's a little bit of that piece that will have to go with it too in terms of what's the process, but it's also what's the product. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel if we're going to build, if, and this is mm -hmm. hypothetical, but if we're going to build that case, mm -hmm. then we need allies out in the community, including those who have, as a consequent, uh, in the lead up to the vote on, on Tuesday, we're saying we think it's unfair for the village to have to foot the whole freight. They're going to have to make, they're going to have to join us if we're going to make that case. They're going to have to join us in making that case and reaching out to their friends and colleagues in the rest of the town mm -hmm. to make that case based on statistical data, um, based on the, the same argument that you just echoed a little bit, Erica, that you know, people all over this town, all over this region make use of Gifford. They send their kids to our high school. They shop at Shaw's. They have as much of a vested interest in, uh, and, uh, and I'm politicizing this a little bit now, but this is my argument. They have as much of a vested interest in the safety of this community at all its levels as those of us who live in the village. And I live in the village. Um, you know, 
I get that argument that it's an undue burden on us. Um, but I also think that I feel very strongly that our short-term pathway ought to be, um, at, at the very least, some kind of full town-wide policing model. What that looks like is open to discussion. But if, if, if the GPS data were to show, you know, we're not the agrarian farming community we were in the, in the 1980s anymore. Um, nor is the population of the rest of the town the same population it was in the 1980s. Nor is the population of the village. And our policing needs are very different from 40 years ago. And we've heard from our, our, our state police tonight that they can't meet the needs that, that um, are at a lower level than the emergent. So, you know, this isn't a discussion we have three or four or five years to let unfold. Um, we have to deal with the immediacy of now and then figure out what five years from now looks like on a gradual basis. I think you'd be really, really, really hard pressed to do, to get through. So say it is something similar to like a union district or even a dual vote model that we've talked about to go from where we are with the district to a townwide thing to create a budget for that, to figure out the level of service and have all of that ready to flick the lights on on July 1. Uh, I don't think we've got those kinds of rabbits in the hat, honestly. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Me neither. And, and so that's some of the, the push-pull there, too, is because the longer we sit where we're at, I mean, we're in limbo right now. We're mm -hmm. floating out in space hoping somebody in all of that infinite area stops by and picks us up. Um, so at a certain point, we've got to figure out a direction and head there. And I, it, so these things might be the right answer long term. It might be that it's a more local town versus village. It might be a, a longer regional one. At some point, there's got to be an apparatus that can go out there and do the job because that's the piece we don't have. Is there funding, again, first day, first day on the job here. Is there funding um, when we had contracted with, you know, Orange County originally, is there the baseline budget for that going into the next fiscal year that we could utilize, I don't want to call it a skeleton crew, but that we could utilize and hire or have available minimal, I hate to say like one officer. Yeah. Sorry, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the direction we got to give Trevor. So what do you want to Is that a short, <laughs> can that be a short term model if it's already at the baseline budget where N not necessarily anything's going to go up or down. It's just what we've utilized as a monetary amount in the past to have a baseline for the next year while we create this new committee to make a whole new, whether it's town or regional. I think there's a continuum of service to think about with that. And so does it move us away from our space float, yeah. Does it actually get us to solid ground somewhere? Because now you're talking about you got one guy, one guy, one cruiser, 40 hours a week because we don't have that. He's the only one on. You got nothing when he needs a holiday, when he has holidays or when he has leave time or when you have a big yeah. incident, he's got no backup. Right. Yeah, exactly. that's a safety risk you're putting him Absolutely. too. And the backup yeah. is the sort of the over this already at their stress point right state police with regards to resources so it's better than floating but so how much nice. farther in it say three hundred fifty thousand dollars you're not able to add kind of the capacity I mean most of those police costs are on and it's a it's a people bit I mean, all of what we do is a people yeah we buy dump trucks and we buy materials but you don't put the people in there you don't have anything to make any of it go uh, right. the most important and they're also our most expensive piece um, so I at those numbers, you're limited, and with each sort of figure out fifty to one hundred thousand dollar increment, you step out, you add a little bit more capability to move along that continuum of service. So really, it's about where do you want to sit between, yeah. you know, hey, ground control to Major Tom, and here's where we're at. 
I'm also really curious about what else the sheriff's department has done for us. So there's talk of like helping out Gifford with veggie bingo and the drug deposits um, and different things like that. And so I think that's also kind of a missing piece of um, if we had nothing, what are those other support systems that will then be gone? Like Clara Martin won't have a support system if they have an emergency. What about Gifford? What about the high school? What about other things that allow you know, things like Veggie Van Gogh to support our more vulnerable <clears throat> populations and all of those like positive sides of it, not just the crime. And I think that a lot of people are forgetting that those things exist with what we had with the Sheriff Department and the PD before that. And I don't know if that's... Other operational things that have already kind of, we've made it through the winter a little bit and it hasn't always been pretty. We have just had to plow around when you think of our winter parking bans and things like that. That has right. historically been enforced with the great assistance of whatever law enforcement we had. Well, if those calls come in at 2 and then, like, who's going to take those at whatever time in the morning and coordinate the towing or try to get calls for trying to out, you know, reach out to the individual in the car? We don't have access to those information systems if it's Kim and I. Right. Um, and so now we've got different obstacles to work with. Those can become safety obstacles pretty quickly. And it's not to say that we get it right every time, even with police, but it's, those are the pieces that come in there. There are other ordinances that might be impacted. There are the times that agencies <coughs> need or want assistance on a welfare check or a mental health call. Um, that's a common one that may not be showing up as much and that we wouldn't have any other capacity. So there is a whole suite of services beyond like the real crime stuff that we're either trying to find a really different model for or we're just not doing. Or town uh, events, like town events, yeah. Um, I mean, most of those insurance <coughs> vouchers that you have for those things require safety um, and security and so maybe you could contract with some security but maybe not and so like fourth of july parade for example which everyone loves where would that land um, and so it's really like taking it's not even just like if we have crime or not and if police are deterrence or not in that conversation it's also allowing the mental health to be there and then medical response from an ambulance for example so you know before the ambulance can get there a police officer can do a lot of things too if they are closer you know um, so I think there's a lot more things at risk and we're leaving our our community pretty vulnerable without having anything I don't know if we can take comments. I'm new here. <laughs> but I think it, it brings you back to that question. Larry was just going to chime in. Go ahead, Larry. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, just to jump in before. I, it sounds like we might be opening up to, to, to some questions from the or comments from the public. Um, so it, it, I just want to kind of bring us back to like not so much what the what the need of policing is and, and what kind of services we get because I, I I think that's important but I'm I think we really need to focus on right now like what 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 are we going to do right now um, it seems to me that um, you know in terms of the, the short term meaning like what happens on on July 1st um, we have a really not that many options right we can um, well, I guess we could put the same budget or a very similar budget in front of the voters. Like, which seems to, to me that seems like um, if, even if folks feel a little more awareness around what we might be losing by by defeating such a vote, such a budget, I think the voters were really clear in this um, in this budget in this um, in this vote. Uh, people did not like that budget, um, so we could try putting a much smaller budget in front of the voters, um, one that would give us a, a very minimal. Um, police presence as a, as, as a perhaps temporary measure, but perhaps not. It's right now hard to say, but we do need to figure out, like I said, what will happen on July 1st. Um, so that seems like that's an option. Um, we have heard that uh, you know some sort of a, a town-wide option um, may, may or may not be possible. I'm, I'm still not really clear as to what our parameters are there. I, I think before we make a decision as to what we're going to put in front of the voters in the short term, um, again, meaning starting July 1, um, I think we, we need some more information um, from our legal counsel in terms of, you know, what they really think 
you know, our, our various options are um, in terms of how much the, um, the articles of merger um, lay out a path, and, and po what, what, what possible paths the articles of merger lay out in front of us. Um, I'd really like to get that information before um, we make a decision. And, um, and I know that will take some time, but perhaps that's something which could be accomplished um, before our next regularly scheduled meeting next month. Um, and then we'd have, um, and if we could get some of that information even before we met, all of us would have a chance to um, digest it before we even had a chance to uh, discuss it together again. And, um, and then my other thought, and which I'm just going to kind of go on here because it's a little hard for me to jump in um, being remote, um, is that in the general budget, we, we did approve money for the police district. Um, my understanding is that we can use that money starting July 1st. Um, so even if it does take us a little bit of time to decide what's going to happen during the next fiscal year, even if we can't get all the pieces in place um, before July 1, doesn't mean that um, all our funding for, for police services will suddenly dry up. Thanks. I'm not sure if I agree with that, Larry. That money was put in to cover services outside of the district. So if you don't have a police department, you don't have anybody to provide the services outside the district. You know, come July 1, if you have no budget, you have no police department. So you have no department. The only way we can make that money available to help offset part of the budget is a basically a contract between the village and the police department and the town area. So it's a purchase of service by the rest of the town. So to give the history, so you understand, you're like, what? <laughs> um, the town is always contracted with Orange County Sheriff for the part outside of the district for a certain amount of patrols. And it was like 8,000 and jumped up to 10 or 15. And the last number was 25,000. And that jump was when the drug houses came to be the couple of them that required a lot more coverage outside of the village, Manager's Drive being one of them and Silway Road being the other. But the, um, the challenge there was how you pay for it now because the Orange County Sheriff's not providing the service. So the money was put in there because we could use the police department to provide that service still and they would basically be providing a service outside of the district. So the money had to be there to pay for that. How are the services that were provided outside of the district by the Sheriff's Department under that contract distinct from what the state police do? Can somebody explain yeah, how, the, that, how that breakdown works or is it overlap or? They provided a lot of like the routine patrol. Uh, they were in the neighborhoods, they were driving through. Uh, we got a lot more than what we paid for because when they got the contract to do the village, they had to go drive to Chelsea, right? They got to drive to the courthouse, they got to drive to check in, and we got free patrol as they drove through town. But um, that service, they did do some calls, but the, the, the calls used to come in, and I believe uh, people would call directly to Orange County Sheriff to get that service. And a lot of those of us that don't live in the village knew if you want the, the service quickly, you called Orange County's dispatch and, and you got it. Yeah, I guess I, I, I'd like to jump in again. I, and, and perhaps I'm wrong, but I, my understanding is that, the, is that the town would have the flexibility to, to use that money for police services. And you know, whenever we draw budgets, yeah, we, we allocate money to certain things, um, but you know, we also have a certain amount of flexibility in how, in how we spend it. And, Perhaps I'm wrong, but that was my understanding that, that we could have at least some flexibility in terms of how that money from the general fund is spent. Yeah, I'm not sure you do. I think that the articles of merger talk about the police district and having a special fund that pays for it. And it, I think you're getting into that murky where you need a lawyer to tell you whether you do or don't, but I, my read of that is that you had to have a special fund, it's a special budget that has to be approved. That's why they vote on it separate. And that's a, a separate funding source for that police district. And the way we got around to provide some level of funding, noting that there's a lot of calls that they respond to, like investigations for things, some don't lead them just within the village, right? The 
the folks are outside of the village sometimes are committing things in the schools or in the village area but to help cover that would give us a way of funding the efforts they were going to undertake outside of there let's also think about what a hundred thousand dollars would fund um, just if you looked at sort of that proposed budget which was 120 hours before officers mm -hmm. and admin took that divided it out we'd be able to fund that operation for a month and a half so we've made it from July 1 to August to Bennington Battle Day. I mean, That's very clear. Very clear. <laughs> the new office is closed. Then. <laughs> Actually, we don't get that one. It's my favorite holiday because there's something that happened in New York. But um, so we only have a hundred thousand dollars in the general fund. Well, and then if we went with some sort yeah. of re, we don't sort of do anything. We sit on that continuum of service down here. It obviously stretches farther, but we're doing a heck of a lot less. And then embedded in all of this is that if you want to do community wants some level of law enforcement service to build up from where we are, where it's just Scott and Rose right now. That's a tough sell for us to hire someone to say, we don't know what's going to happen July 1 right now. We don't know how we're going to pay you. We don't know whether or not anybody else is going to help. We don't know how sort of long term this is. We don't know. These are all the things that we don't know. But we can pay you now. We can employ you now. Come on and, and join. <coughs> And it's really, I mean, that's where we sort of get caught in. We can't move too far from where we're at until some of these questions start. And so the longer we push that out, the more that uncertainty lists and the harder it's going to get to be to move off of that and, and just to find those bodies. Because right now we think we can pull some from some of the existing pools that are out there. That's going to vanish sooner or later. Cops are a hot commodity because there aren't enough of them. Um, so. How maybe Scott's the best position to answer this? How does the ORI factor into this too? Because yeah. we, got, we got it on the six, and then it got dialed back as a consequence of the vote mm -hmm. on um, on Tuesday, which was one of my fears all along. Um, how does that play into what the next six weeks to two months, three months look like? Well, it needs to be, you know, kind of a decision on what direction this board uh, is going to go in regards to are we going to have a PD or not. Uh, if you're going to have a PD, that ORI can be pushed forward and go and we'll have access all the above. It's just on a pause button to figure out what is going to happen. As soon as they, you guys decide that, yeah, we're going to have a PD, it could be just me, it could be uh, two officers, it could be whatever, uh, we can start rocking and rolling. Um, if the decision is not to have a PD, that ORI is going to be non-existent, go right back to square one before we try resurrecting it. I also think it would be harder to try to get a regional something or other put together if we have nothing. There has to be some structure for a regional to take shape. Right. I mean, there just does. And when we're talking about the potential partners that are out there, for better or worse, we're the entity with a population that has some history having a department. So we're gonna be, if not at the center of that, we're gonna be pretty integral to it. So it, it when you do think about that as a long-term option, yeah, somebody's gotta have structure. Yeah, Darkfield did say they would come to the table with us too. Yeah. Darkfield's got a department and they have the yeah. experience. They're sick of running their own. They're looking to go to well, a much bigger model, too. right? So, there's you know, there's, there. yeah. So there are, potential partners, but you do need structure. <coughs> Somebody's got to kind of be the center of it. Um, so we can't, really, I feel like if we let everything dissolve July 1st, basically, then you're, you're not going to be able to build, there would be no foundation, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so we won't be able to build anything up when we have nothing. I think we need to do something. It's less clear what we'd be bringing to the table, for sure, right. in the regional conversations. Like we really want to. <laughs> we yeah. really want to be good enough. Well, we're we'll back to what yeah. we want to yeah. in the historic charm. I mean, that's sort of it. yeah. it's not much to sell. Yeah. But. Yeah. We had some folks in the, I think it's, I think Milo Beach at um, but you can be next. Sure. I'm uh, Milo Cutler. I'm the animal control officer for Randolph. Um, and in terms of other services that probably, you know, they don't make the paper. Um, that a lot of people don't realize is um, there are times when I need a police assist because I'm, I have a complaint that comes in and I know that the dog owner, that I, the house I'm going to is a known drug house. 
that there are individuals with weapons. And I can certainly speak to the last 20 years that um, when I first started this job, I never thought twice about going to somebody's house to knock on their door to talk to them about their dog. And now I have to do research. I have to know where I'm going, who I'm going to. I need to know if it's in the village, whether to call the local PD, you know, then Orange County Sheriff. If it's outside the village, it would either be Orange County Sheriff or State Police. And now we know we don't have Orange County Sheriff um, able to provide that. And where state police have in the past, now they're short staffed. And so then it becomes a question of, you know, telling a complainant, yes, I'd like to go to that call, but I'm going to have to wait till I can get a police assistant. I don't know when that's going to be. Um, but I've, I've certainly been to places where there are firearms visible, where there are known drug houses, and it's, you know, it's not like, it's not like it used to be as much as we wish it was. I'm sure there's other services like DCF that aren't here in this room that also provide amazing services to vulnerable populations that also need this as too. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of other options or other things out there that we're not even, that aren't here in the room. Yep. Um, um, uh, just a piece of information for me to understand. I was here when we did the merger and was involved in some of it, and, and as I recall, there is no perceived path forward in it because it wasn't designed to be dissolved. But the bigger point that I'm questioning is, does the police district as a tax authority exist any longer? I think when the PD went away and it was dissolved and the original OIRI was given up, I think the district, its reason for being was gone, therefore it went. But now, clearly, with a vote that says we're not going to have a PD, we're not going to put up any money, that the district itself just doesn't exist. And Larry's correct. You guys have the authority to just say, that's it, we're done, it's now town-wide, just like you would for any other line item. And I can't believe that anybody's going to sue you for it. And if they do, they can stand in line because they're not going to win. Yeah, I, I think you've clear. got the solution. I don't think, I'm not sure it's that clear, but. I, well, can I we actually be getting a, a, a ruling from the, the town council about, I mean, yeah. this feels like it should be top of the agenda of our legal council to, to um, rule on exactly what Tom is alleging or what Larry is alleging. Um, we, we need that clarity before we can. Speed depends on how clear it is going in. So the difference between this and, say, say a Waterbury conversation is you don't have those sort of formal entities that are easily recognizable in statute for whom there are already processes. There's not an incorporated village anymore. It's this other special service district that doesn't sort of neatly fit into some of these other ones. So we're going to need them to be able to go through that and sort of advise on what is the right process. Is it option A, which is two vote, option B, which is something different, option C, which is something we haven't even considered. Uh, joking with somebody, I read those sections three times, came up with four different interpretations of it. it so I think that's where we're going to really want that. And how fast that happens depends on how clearly this fits into recognized structures, how much local history, any of the things that are in the gray area for us right now are easily discernible for the individual who do, goes through, does the research, can find it, and, and does those pieces. Um, um, so but we'll ask for as soon as possible possible. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's complicated. Trevor, when you say special service district, mm -hmm. what exactly does that mean? That's the terminology. It's the terminology in the, articles in the of merger. merger document. Yeah. Right. And but so the problem is you got, they define, they have special service district and they give kind of how you vote to get in and how you vote to get out. But then they have what they call police district and then they have water and then they have sewer. But they don't say water, sewer, or police special district. They just say district. So, you know, when you get a lawyer involved, they're going to be like, what's every little word mean and how it's used in what order and whatnot. So that's when we say it's not clean, right. it's murky. You know, you probably could give this to two lawyers and get two different opinions. And the water, wastewater districts, when you think about how it fits in larger statutes and those other things, those are much clearer enterprise fund type entities. So questions around those are sort of more easily resolved just because of the nature of what they are and how more easily known they are. 
I mean, it's functionally a special taxing district that was created through the Articles of Merger, as opposed to a taxing authority that was created through some other action of the voters. And so there's a little bit of a distinction between this and, say, a fire district or a union municipal district, which is what the solid waste compacts generally are. Um, and so that could be where the complicate, and it may be that they look at it and there is something that we don't know about in case law and it all unfolds. I've seen small things take a really long time and I've seen big things not take as long as you think. Yep. Okay. Hang on, you got one behind you and then you. Oh. Joe? So, so I'm, I'm going to be up front and say I'm not for the, I'm from outside the district and I'm not for the expansion. So I want to just kind of be clear on, on that and open with it. I think evidence, evidence for discovery is that you have a district now. I think further evidence for discovery is that it was once voted down by Shaw's to expand that district down by Shaw's, and that vote lost. So there's precedence there that said that, that there was a vote held for an area of town to join the district and that separately in that area, not the whole town on it, but that area, got to vote on that, and they, and they said, no, no, that's not the direction we want to go. So with that, I think, like I said in Discovery, as it gets to court, the Discovery is there to say that you have, a, you have an article of merger and that you would, lose the, you would lose the case of just saying the whole town to do it. So to me, though I, I very much support my police department, and one of the officers here knows the blue light in my house every day that, that goes on at dusk every night and stays on till morning. And it has been since probably the march through town, and they face the police department down there. So I, wa I want you to understand that I, it's not that I don't support police in our town. I really do. But I think what has to happen is to understanding your revenue sources of how you're paying for it. And the revenue sources might not just be from a local tax or expanding that tax to other areas of the town. Those revenue sources can come in the form of a local options tax, which we see in about 15 towns in Vermont, Burlington, Williston, 1% one, 1 local option tax. I think, that that, I think that that number alone can actually be told to you by the state of Vermont because they see all the taxes that are paid in by the businesses. And then and what happens is if you say you want a 1% local, local tax, they take, they take what you have from those businesses as a historic nature, and then, then they can bring that revenue forward and say, because when you do a local options tax, 50% 50, 50 of that money that they would take goes to the state and 50% comes to the town. So they can give you a pretty accurate figure over the last couple of years of exactly where that revenue piece comes from. I furthermore think that what drives, and I think the evidence from the state police here may be able to, may be able to disclose, is, is it businesses that are being broken into? And are, are those pieces there? And it's, it's actually, it's not anti-business, because I'm pro-business, I'm very pro-development, I'm pro-business. And, and, and I look at it and say, is someone going to drive to Lebanon, New Hampshire to get a carton of eggs if they have to pay a penny more? Not to be taxed food, but you know what I'm saying, of those commodities that are taxed. No one's going to do that, not at $3.50 a gallon, and soon to be $4.50 a gallon, if Mr. Sackowitz has his way. That said, I just, I just think that you have to look at the revenue sources that may be available to you. But also, you have to take the thought of the people of what they want in their area that they live in, and statistically. There's many folks that live in the district here tonight that are for expanding that district for the simple reason of paying for it. That's, 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 a, real, that's a real simple reason for it. Because it, I'll be honest with you, it's not going to make me on my road any safer, just one more, one more statistic. That's all. By the time they get there, by the time you get to East Randolph, you're recording that someone broke into your house, you know, and your statistic. And do we want to pay for that statistic? So I think those are a lot of questions. I would like to offer that I would like to be on that committee if formed. And not, not, not to abut people, but to come together and to say, hey, you know, can we look at all these revenue sources? The state police, they, they, do, a, they do a fantastic job. And, and, and that said, but they're how many FDEs short? 25 FTEs short? 
right? 25 full, did they budget for that 25 FTEs? Is that a revenue source if the state police can't call that someone has to go up, someone else has to go there? Because that's what it was, was thought of with the merger. State police would cover here, town police would cover, would cover that district. So if you're 25 FTEs short and you can't make it, is that 25 FTEs still in your budget? Is that a revenue source? So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to think about. Thank you. Just, yeah, taxes second. are a 70-30 split. So 70% local, 30% state. State uses the 30 to basically pay its property taxes. So then the money raised from that comes back to us in the form of So I'm sorry, that's, that's changed then. Because the last time I remember it was 50-50. So I just read something from 2022. Yeah, I, was, I was on the select board a lot longer ago than that. So, so, <laughs> so that has yeah. changed. So, yeah. And, and then I'm sorry, I'm showing my age. But yeah, that's okay. And then out of the 70%, the municipality also pays an administrative or, or, or sort of other fee to the state. You can sort of um, estimate that based on what you think the percentage of whoever files are, because you don't, until you dig into that data, some folks file annually, some file monthly, some file quarterly. So basically split it into thirds. Depending on how much is raised in, that's another few thousand dollars that comes off the top of the 70%. So in terms of what that revenue is, and then it depends, what you get in depends on how broadly you do it. The thing I was trying to find really quickly is they can provide some of that sales data so you can look into those categories, but whether it, what it doesn't go down into is sort of that granular level of inside a district, outside of a district. I don't know if we'd be able to get that kind of data to sort of say, what would it be in these boundaries versus those? I just would have to dig into it. The last time we went, I went through this, was out in the Mad River Valley when the three towns out there looked at it. This was a couple of years ago. And so, and then you also have the, if you have too few businesses for privacy reasons, you don't have any data at all. So it just, we, we could dig into it. It's just <clears throat> running that calculation as a revenue source. And I don't know based on what we have here. I mean, that was a tourist destination with quite a few restaurants, some lodging establishments, you had a few other things that we may not have in the district or even yet town-wide, so um, I want to mute expectations for how much <coughs> revenue might be there. It's certainly some. It's not property taxes. I'm not sort of suggesting that, but it, because in that model in Waitsfield, for example, with all of that tourist-based activity, you were talking somewhere in the four to $600,000 range a few years ago in terms of what was actually back in after you calculated out for all the other stuff. If you don't mind me saying that, I, I, I don't think that's a hard exercise. I think you can be f figured out fairly fairly quickly. It's just a numbers game. I'm sorry, I do a lot of numbers in a day. And so to me, that's, I, think that's a, I think that's a fairly quick numbers game. There. If you guys want me to do this, yeah. I will use my own sheet from before to do these numbers. Harvey Porter, um, it seems the biggest drawback to us forming a town-wide police department is the fact that we have a police district and Tom's saying, well, we're not really functional right now, so are we a police district? I had a conversation years ago, because this problem's been going on for many, many, many years. Uh, I had a conversation with Steve Webster, and I said, couldn't we just vote out the police district? And I think that's what Waterbury did. Were you mentioning that there, Trevor? Um, that was more of a, they got rid of most of their village infrastructure and kept a utility district, and at that point went from a police to, I think they, I don't know if they landed right with the state police contract after yeah. that or something. Anyway, anyway, that, I believe there was a yeah. vote in Waterbury to disband their police district. And I was talking to Steve Webster about this. He says, yes, you can, we can vote to disband the police district, but we don't have the authority to end those articles of merger. He says that has to go to the legislature to do that. So that's something that you are new on the board here, may not know that. that and I would personally say, let's get started with that process. And because I think the voters in the village have basically said, we're looking to see this be a town-wide police department. I think you got to go outside the village I, though, still and get that vote from the rest of the town that they want that to be oh, a town-wide too. But it would be yep. a town-wide vote and yep. not a village vote. But you have the village has to can't you know end the end the end the district. The legislature then has to actually finalize that act. And then you can form a proposal that's a town-wide vote. So it's essentially like a charter change, really. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, which is what the merger document Hi, was. Hi. That went in and had a. I'm not sure if uh, uh, I can be recognized. Yeah, just the uh, wait your turn. Ask that people do identify themselves when they speak for folks, they don't necessarily know, all know one another. Yep. Okay. We all know, <laughs> we all know Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have another hand? No? You're good? Okay. Yep, go ahead, Kelly. Hi, how are, how are you? Um, I, I just wanted to say that um, I, I did spend a, a, a significant amount of time talking to um, police district voters in advance of this vote. M my reason for voting no was simply that it, the budget was just too much. It was just going to raise my tax bill too high. So when we used to have a police department, I was paying about $800 a year for police services. And I, I, do, I do not want to go back to that. I, I personally didn't see it as a, like, it's unfair. I, you know, I, I don't, for me, it was just an absolute thing of like, um, and, and, I, and a lot of people I spoke to in the police district just thought um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year for policing in a very small area was just far too much. There just aren't enough people um, to support five new municipal employees um, and, and to pay them what they deserve to be paid. Um, so, uh, you know, I hope that uh, I hope that you do reform the committee. I was on the committee the last time, um, and that you can generate some ideas. I hope that you're talking to the Windsor County Sheriff about perhaps. Um, contracting in, in the interim um, or long term. There's lots of possibilities here. Um, but I just wanted to say one possibility is to float a new number to the to the district, flat fund it um, and start there. I know that if the if the if the budget had been flat funded, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have I, I probably would have supported it. But thank you. Kelly, did you Kelly, get the impression, get the impression from, all from all the people you were talking to that, talking that, was, that, the that was the case? If it was level, it was funded, level funded, they would have supported, would have supported it? it. Uh, no, I actually didn't think, I didn't have that specific conversation with everyone, but, uh, but many, many people I spoke to really just thought it was just too much of a tax increase. Um, and and what they a lot of people didn't realize is that they were paying that years ago, right? Like when we had a police department before, my like I said, my taxes were eight, I was spending eight hundred dollars a month. I just felt like that was breathtaking, um, a, a breathtaking amount of money for me to pay for policing in this village. Um, but You're paying eight hundred a month. A month? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, a year. A year. A year, a year. I was like, what? A year. Like, what size house you got going, lady? <laughs> you didn't want to give your assessment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just to help you with one part, Kelly, we did have a conversation with the Windsor County Sheriff, and he said, no, 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 not ready, don't have the staff, don't have the infrastructure, can't do anything. So yeah. uh, he's... Uh, and we checked with him today, too, so... That is also, a, that's the Sheriff's Department in transition as well. Yep, going the opposite only, only direction. This time is a, yeah, it, it, Ryan, is, Ryan stands ready to build it up, but, you know, in that case, it was a 42-year sheriff instead of a 16-year sheriff, and, yeah. and, and that transition has gone a lot more smoothly, but he's mm -hmm. got his work cut out for him. Uh, and I know this because I covered the Sheriff's Department for the, the largest newspaper in Windsor County. So, um, uh, what, what did he say today? He said that he does. He's not ready. The same thing, right? Yeah. They need staffing. They need infrastructure. They need equipment. They need, you know, all the the same place everybody else is. Maybe in a few years. Thank you all. Not today, unfortunately. Do we have anybody else online? I just wanted to get some clarity on the level yep. funding question. Kelly, you're referencing what we budgeted this past year for the sheriff's services. You're calling that level funding, right? The 400 and... It was about 350 in the 350. district, yeah. Just wanted to be clear on what we meant by level funding. And and I was getting cranky as it was pushing as up, right? But not, not 
not enough to not enough to stick the boat. <laughs> All right, do we have anybody else online that wanted to talk? Not seeing any little microphones light up. Okay, hang on, Joe, we got one more in the front now. Um, I'm, I'm Dave Hurwitz, I live on uh, Randolph Ave in town. Um, I also work on uh, Weston Street, at the far end of Weston Street, I have a wood shop down there. I've worked down there for the past 20 years, so I've seen a lot of different things during that time. Um, and the point I'd like to make is that um, while some people feel very safe up in the Hospital Hill area where maybe they're not seeing a lot of activity, I've definitely observed more going on in these other parts of town. Um, and there's been a string of break-ins on Weston Street in the past uh, two years. Um, both in uh, my building there was attempted break-in um, and then the building across the street many years ago there was a there was a very blatant break-in where a, a ton of stuff was stolen out of uh, that building um, and that was when we had a Randolph Police Department with I think six or more officers at the time um, and then with this other string of break-ins there was a house that was broken into um, there were some tools stolen out of a garage. So there's been definitely stuff going on. Um, but the thing I would like to just point out for you to keep in mind as you try to figure out, I know this is really complex. I appreciate everything that you're weighing out here. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is that when we had Orange County Sheriff coverage and when we had a town police department, there was not 24 hour coverage. Their shifts ended at night. And that's when a lot of these break-ins happen. I mean, people are breaking in at 3 in the morning. So um, I don't know how you deal with that, especially if people are concerned about the size of a budget. But that is an important consideration. And, you know, some businesses have done things to, on their own. You know, like I've put in security cameras. I've put in alarm systems. There's, there's things people can do to try to, you know, help that deterrence factor, and I think that can help. Um, but anyway, that's just another aspect to, to keep in mind as you figure things out. Thanks. Well, it's interesting for me as a business owner in downtown, my business probably pays close to $5,000 worth of taxes a year on our building. We, well, our building overall is $9,000 a year, and none of us who have businesses inside that building have any vote on it. Exactly. You know, so a lot of the businesses that are downtown are paying a sizable amount of the taxes and have no say into any of this. I, I, I'm glad you made that point because I've heard exactly that same thing from other business owners um, within the police district that uh, they make use of the services. I, I bowl in the, the um, men's bowling league. Well, it's a co-ed league, but whatever. <laughs> at, uh, at, uh, at Village, at, at uh, Valley Bowl every Wednesday night. And I get an earful from the staff and my fellow bowlers about, hey, what happens if somebody comes in and robs this bowling alley when I'm here? Wayne Warner has absolutely no say over well, we've heard the taxation without representation. Right, I've heard right. that a few times and lately. The other too. thing I'd like to add yeah. to uh, what Mr. Horowitz mm -hmm. just said is, um, you know, there's an old adage that a, a conservative is a, 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 a liberal who's been mugged. Um, and um, I, I, I just like to suggest that the first time someone who um, contends they don't need the police level of police services that, that we think they do, or at least we're proposing that they have, first time their home's broken into, they might be whistling a different song. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need then. to take that, uh, I think we need to take that into consideration as well. Just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean the potential is, and, and we heard the data earlier, yeah. suggesting well, how much always. Randolph puts a demand on the police. We, we need to be a little bit realistic about what century we're living in. I also think it's important to remember that um, even though I haven't been a victim of the crime, like other people that are in my community are at risk. And so if we have domestic violence or like DCF issues or anything like that, I want those people to be taken care of too. Yeah. And that's kind of the issue of like it hasn't happened to me or these things and being in the community. And, and the, the, the drug houses that we heard about earlier, the kinds of calls that Milo has to go on where there are animal cruel, 
allegations of animal cruelty that are tied to, they're not happening in a village. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Well, they're happening oh, yes, in the village, are. and they're, ha but they're happening outside the village as well, correct? Right. Well, they're yeah. happening yeah. everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and so, you know, we're not Mayberry RFD anymore. I said this at a previous, that, you know, this isn't the Andy Griffith show. This is 2023, and I, 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 I am a village taxpayer, and I feel the pain of, of those taxes, and I understand what Kelly's talking about, um, but there's a happy medium somewhere, yeah. and that's what we're challenged with finding. Yep. Uh, we had another hand. Brady, I haven't figured out how to raise my hand. Yeah. Uh, Hang on, Marty. I'll come I'll back to you. I'll be in line and wait, but uh, yep. I'll wait my turn, but I want to be in line. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I am absolutely for a police, some sort of police protection within the town, within the whole town. I think it's figuring out, as Joe said, how do we pay for it? Because if I've got a 2,000 acre farm, I shouldn't be taxed on 2,000 acres. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tax concern. But I think we need to be realistic about police protection because I'm very involved in a laundromat in town. And as you may remember, we were broken in either two or three times. The second time they took the safe, which was bolted to the floor. We had it on video. The state police were involved in it. The, the Orange County Sheriff was involved in it. And even with having video of the person who did it, we couldn't do anything about it. So having a police department is not going to make the crime go away and make, make them go someplace else but it's still going to be there, and they're gonna come out to your house if you're broken into and say, yep, you were broken into, but there's not much that they can do about it. So there is a limitation to what the police can do, and my heart goes out to them. It's a very frustrating job. And if you do form a committee, I'm, I'll volunteer to be involved in it. Great. Go ahead, Marty. Well, um I just wanted to say that I, I've taken a, a, a close look at the merger agreement and um, at the statutes that govern the creation of police departments and the merger of municipalities. And I think the select board has a lot more discretion than has been suggested by the comments in Front Porch Forum. Um, so, I, I, but I don't think that is what really matters because what really matters is whether we can build a consensus within this town as a single community for the kind of police service that we need. And I, I don't know what the answer to that is, um, but I, I don't think that the current system with a police district that is um, called upon one way or another to provide services outside of the district, and we have to quarrel over who pays for that, it, 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 that doesn't make sense. There has to be some unified, harmonious system of policing that's fair to everyone statewide or county, townwide, and, and that means that we have to establish a process by which we reach a consensus. And, and ultimately, it means that the people who are outside the current police district are going to have to be in the leadership to decide what's the right system for harmonizing services. Because the idea that we gotta, we're gonna, gonna continue to just draw on the services that are provided within the police district for problems outside of the police district is just not fair and it's not reasonable and it can't be sustained. Thank you. Is there any other comments? I just have one last comment. Yep. And that one last comment is, years ago, um, we also had, at the school system, we, we had a resource officer, Tina Farnham mm -hmm. was the resource officer. Then we got actually a, I think it was a federal grant for it that, that, that paid for it, and then when that federal grant ran out after two, three, five years, whatever happened, the school said, nope, the, the, the grant has ended, so we're not going to pay for this anymore. <coughs> I've heard a, a, a select member or two talk about the safety of the children in the school and that type of thing like that. And when you look at the school budgets, and I, and I, I follow the budgets quite closely, 
And when you look at the school budgets, and you look what uh, was actually put in front porch for him with Lane Millington and what he was going to do with this million dollars over here that they had extra, and they had what they're going to do with that million dollars over there that they have extra, and this is going to go to this fund here and that fund there. And if you look at the history of it, it's year after year after year. He keeps tucking a different amount of money to, of, of, of that nature into other funds. And I think as an interim measure that you're, that you're talking about, with all of these extra funds, is there the opportunity to actually pay for that school resource officer on its own because we just seem to have millions of dollars extra in the, in the school budget every year? Um, and so that piece of it is something that, again, I talk about a revenue source. And there's a revenue source right there that can, that help, pay, that can help pay for that. And all of the kids go there from all of the towns around here. Not just, not, not just from Randolph, not just from Randolph Center, not just from East Randolph, North Randolph, South Randolph, or the Village. All of it. You know, we, we, we look at those budgets there. I mean, we, every year we vote to say, what are we going to, we're going to take it and stick it in this fund, stick it in that fund. So I, I think that's, again, a, another piece that, that need uh, the puzzle, and it's a, it's a big puzzle, it's a very big puzzle, but another, another piece of that puzzle to look at. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. So my concern, I just sat here and kind of sketched out the timeline. You, if we wait for a legal opinion, I think, I mean, unless they pull a rabbit out of their hat, I don't think this is a four week or three week piece for them to get. You know, we're, we're having trouble getting all the documents, even ourselves, to figure out the history of it and how it came to be. Um, but okay, let's assume if we wait until that April deadline, we're not going to make the July one for two reasons, right? First, by the time we back it up and we do the, you know, we wait until April to get the opinion, and then we start deciding what we're going to do, and then you got to develop it, and you got to do the public meetings on it, and have all that conversation, and then you got to go through the warning and and whatnot to get a vote. You're into July by the time you're even voting on this. And it's the structure of the votes. Do you have a vote at a special meeting regarding the district boundaries, and then do you need to come back for a different vote on the budget for that new entity or with a budget based on whatever happened? And that the all others? depends on the legal opinion and where you go. And so it's another 30 days from there if it's ready to go. But it sounded like from what Kelly had experienced, level funding may have gotten the votes through. It was the increase to going to your own department from a contracted department so I don't think we can afford to do this in a linear timeline I think we got to go on a parallel timeline and I think you I think our approach that is coming through to me is making the most sense is developing a budget that's level funded and a service model what does that look like at the same time we're getting this legal opinion because even if the legal opinion comes in and says the select board can just choose to do it there's no way that vote's going through if we aren't doing outreach and having conversations and, and getting, you know, going through the process of that. And, and that's, that's probably another full year. I think, I to think be, it is. At least realistically. That might be the conversation mm -hmm. we need to have a year from now or in the budgeting Getting cycle. Getting ready for the yeah. town meeting Nine next months year from now. type yeah. thing. You know, what does it look like and where are we going? I think we're, we're I think, you know, the, the approach that listening to everybody tonight seems to be clearer is we come in with a level funded budget. What does that look like if we, you know, have, if we have the impact on the police district the same as it is today, right? Because it's not going to be level funded. We put 100000 in the general fund budget, which is 75000 more than it's been. So it's not going to be level funded, but if we have a budget that's prepared that doesn't change the amount that's raised out of the police district for that. So how much money would that be out of the police district if we level funded it? Three uh, something. What was proposed like 350 ish or something? Mm -hmm. It's like 343. We're gonna lose some one time surplus funds from the transition before. And then we have a hundred thousand dollars in the general fund. 
So we have 543 if that were to pass, right? 343 and 100 was 443. Oh, and I went to Randolph School. <laughs> the, really good at that, so. the only concern I, I would have about level funding is we've all heard what the extraordinary um, rate of inflation has been yep. in the last year. Um, and uh, the figure that gets kicked around a lot in, in, is 7%, I believe. What about if we proposed adding 7% to the previous? So in other words, level fund plus 7% and ask Trevor and Scott to work with that and come back with a proposal that we can put forward. That's 373 some change. And then you have the 100, you're at 473. I mean, I think that's, I don't see how else we're going to get to a point where, first off, we're moving forward and we can do something as far as getting the ORI back off the shelf so we can start getting some level of, of service that's not continuing to stress the state police, but at the same time giving us that time that it's going to be needed to figure out what our direction is and how we get to that point. And so the budget for the police operating for the town was like 445 or something or that, that that's what they're voting on because it wasn't the 773 right because that was equipment from arpa and some different things so we what's take the arpa one time funds out of it with this model right the other 200,000 was for fit up so that stuff that we have either already bought would need anyway or plan to buy so the vehicles terminals, everything down to the USB, you know, little thumb drives to get cases back and forth from the state's attorneys. So that's already separate and underway and obligated and being spent. Um, so really, you're talking about figuring out what the amount to be raised by taxes. It's if you go up to 373, if we're not adding any other revenue sources in beyond what we've had traditionally. So we're not taking the high utilization payments, we're not taking any of the ARPA one-time funds, we're not taking sort of any because at this level of funding, we're not going to have the bodies to take on any contracts either. So right. it's probably scaling all of those non-tax or non-property tax revenues back down toward um, maybe some event fees, a few other things, some traffic and speeding fines. Fifteen thousand dollars, maybe. So we're probably trying to raise yeah. somewhere around three fifty-five to three sixty. So there'd be a little bit of an increase in there. I don't. We'd think have to model it out to see what, but. I don't think you want to put like the ARPA or anything like that because it inflates the budget. Then you're going to have an extra officer that you might or might not be able to do. I guess I'm just spending like, like I, I guess bottom line, the four officers and the admin, what was the cost for that? For just the people pieces, the yeah. insurance and everything? Um, that was 631. We're probably talking about Scott an officer, maybe some part-time capacity in the administrative assistant who does more than just sort of sit there and greet people. There's an awful lot of work that person does to make sure things are reported correctly, timely, cases can be built, cases will hold up. In addition to they might provide some dispatching and that's before we get into whether or not we loop them in and pay for them out of other funds and some of our own resiliency needs. So that person does more than just Randolph PD, well, how can we help you? I mean there's a lot that goes on there. Sure. So on the enforcement side, it sounds like you're saying two and a half FTEs, including Scott, plus um, possible part-time um, supplemental? Um, yeah. Yes, and I think it's two FTEs in terms of the officer stuff, right. including Scott. So Scott is a patrol officer and chief in this model. Okay. Another officer, maybe two part-timers, depending on how many hours we're able to squeeze okay. in there, plus the admin. You're not talking about 120 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the number is with that. We'd have to talk that through, but you're talking about a number less than that. And so that will have its impacts. And so I just want everyone to... Right. All of these things, whether we went all in or we come all out, everything's got some level of impact. So wherever we push the chips. Well, I think that's what we got to do. Like, and that's a, that was some that's something we would need to know even if we said we're going back out with close to what we went out with to begin with, right? So right. if we level fund, this is your level of service. This is what this looks like. And this is what we won't be able to provide. You know, or do you give directions so that if you have limited hours, they're not providing certain services on the side? Like we're not gonna provide 
traffic control for Veggie Van Gogh or, you know, those type of things. You're going to have to have somebody that you send through, you know, we'll give you access to it. Here's your flagger training. Yep. Here's your orange vest. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to have to help control traffic at your own event. Like, right. it may come to that. Like, while we're working through this interim period, you know, certain yeah. events that we have in town, you're going to have to go hire. Here's a few companies that will provide you traffic control for the bike race we or the run the or, or, flying yep. or whatever. Right. That may be part of what that equation looks like. It's, yeah, I would expect core services, and even then, we're pulling rabbits out of hats in some cases, probably. Um, but that would also give us, you know, a way forward for bigger and better things, right? Well, potentially. We may have pitched some kind of ride space, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're writing on. We're writing on. <laughs> do, do we need a motion to? No, I think it was just a discussion to kind of give right. some direction. It's not fair to say to Trevor, bring us another proposal. Right. Right? Like, what do you want? What do you want it to look like? Kind of what are the parameters? And I think we've kind of given you that at this point. And we'll sell for X and show you what it means in terms of level of service and from here to there kind of a thing. Yeah, and then, <coughs> you know, um, Looking at the timeline, I would say when that's ready and comes out and people have had a chance to digest it, if it comes out in the next, you know, few weeks and we want to squeeze in another meeting to talk about it, we could probably do that um, to just keep it moving forward. Because we wait until April and we meet once a month, you're, yeah. you're too late. I think based on the way our templates are set up for some of this, if you wanted to come back in, say, two weeks, We'd have a product for you. I'm, gonna, I'm, dialing, I'm dialing in my schedule. I thought it was an old phone there. <laughs> I'm going to be in Portugal from the 13th to the 28th, so I'm going to have to figure out the time. They've got internet there. Hmm? They've got internet there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be actually be in the middle of the Atlantic. I'm going to be in the Azores. But um, I'll just have to figure out. Yeah, it would be the, we're looking at I coming back on the 23rd. I have going to be, and I have a laptop, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I just might be, there you go. it might be, uh, you know, 10 o'clock at night when it's 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock here or whatever, but I, I might have it. So do we want to schedule the 23rd at 5.30 while everybody's here? They yeah. can check their calendars. Say that again? The 23rd at 5.30. Is that after I happy hour? Do we want to? <laughs> I think it's probably about a three hour time difference. So. Ahead of us or behind us? Uh, it would be 8.30 there oh. and 5.30. So you'll already be in there. And I can't hour. promise you, uh, you know, I'll come home and <laughs> No, I, I, will, I won't make a point of being kind of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll so, get to it in just a minute. Um, all right. So that does that give you enough direction? How much you're looking at? Okay. All right. You had another comment, Marty? Well, I just had a, a clarifying question. Um, the, does the direction you're talking about now uh, say anything about the use of police district resources? to provide police services outside of the police district? Well, there's $100,000 in the budget to do just that. And so it allows- you're, So you're proposing to put that in, you're proposing to put that in this budget that you're, I, I realize you're still thinking about it, but uh, you're proposing to put that in this budget that you're discussing now? It passed on Tuesday, that part of it passed. So there is $100,000 out there for- In the general fund, okay. Service outside of the district. Okay. And so there would be some mechanism by which- Is, is that- Out there to draw money in for that. It, under the merger agreement, is that legal? You can contract with somebody to provide services. So the, the setup is basically the village police department is contracting with the town to provide those services. But half of the cost of that service to for uh, people outside of the police district is paid for, paid for by people inside the police district. Yep. 
there's no way for us to tax just those outside of the boundaries. I so I think that raises a legal question. Yep. Well, I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. If people outside the well, police the district don't want county. services, but they won't pay for them all themselves when they do want them. So, I mean, you know, it's it, it's it, it's a cat's meow. It can't have it both ways. So the money. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've said I've said is I, I I you've been giving me a lot of time. I appreciate that. Thank you. So we had a dollar value in the budget for years, and we contracted with Orange County Sheriff to provide that service outside. The thought was that if we put that number up to kind of cover a much more County realistic understood. Let me finish it's the answer, please. Police. So we. If we put a dollar value that was much more realistic to what the call volumes were having, which we know were created by just a few places, um, it not only allowed the fair way of paying for that service, but it allowed a funding source. And Orange County Sheriff can't provide the service, so I guess the town could go out and contract with somebody to still provide that service but then you've lost the revenue source that will help cover the cost of the police district while we find a long-term solution. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the... Okay, great. So we've given direction at this point to Trevor, and I think we beat this one pretty good tonight. Um, we have a path forward. Anybody who wants to come and talk about the budget and whatever, we'll be back here in two weeks, same time, same place. Feel free to come join us. It's going to be a hoopla. What we'll be going over at that one is be a a level funded budget, away. what that looks like, what the service level looks like, is it realistic, you know, are we painting ourselves into a risk, and if we have it, which I don't, don't get your hopes up, I really seriously doubt we'll have a legal opinion in two weeks on this, but that's pretty much the extent of what the agenda will be in two weeks, and we'll see where it takes us, but thanks you all for coming. The only time we usually get a crowd like this is when we got something that not everybody agrees on or when we advertise it incorrectly and get people fired up. So I'm glad we <laughs> advertised it correctly and we just had different opinions. Thanks for being civil. Milo? Um, in the meantime, do we just have state police? Correct. Yep. Although there will be some calls made tomorrow to see if we can unstick the decision that was made today by the state police's boss. <laughs> so great thanks everybody we're going to roll on and talk about an allocation request for 41 central street function at the end of the day we've got a water wastewater advisory board they work with the water wastewater superintendent they'll review these requests hey harvey for can you take that upstairs harvey we're still meeting if you could take that upstairs that'd be wonderful thank you for coming thank you, thank you guys awesome thanks thank a lot guys thanks for yeah thank you for coming guys <laughs> yeah, thank you. okay so 41 central street wants to connect we want to connect these are the habitat for humanity houses that are being built right there the water wastewater committee has recommended that uh, we have plenty of capacity for those we are actually pretty blessed with both our wastewater plant and our water facilities that capacity is not an issue um, so if you approve those they'll be able to connect at those fees indicated anybody have any questions on that if not we'll entertain a motion to approve so um, wait a second, can I do this? 
Can I do a motion? So I um, it already moved. Oh, you, oh, you We're moved. waiting yeah. for a second. <laughs> I'll second that then. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So when it gets laid out just right, you'll hear so moved. So moved. Okay. That's what he did. I so he wouldn't like have to read the formal one gotcha. or anything. Yeah. Just okay. yep, gotcha. we agree. So I moved. Shorthand. I was like looking okay. at the language too. It's like right here. It's like I'm logging to my phone. <laughs> so uh, next up, we have two grant applications for the library. <laughs> I think Amy's on if you have any questions about them, but another part of our process with grants is folks will come to us and seek authorization to apply. We do it, they can go forward and do it. We usually hit them ahead of time, sometimes with timelines. It's more of a retroactive approval, but it's part of a, an ingrained process. And I think I see Amy if you have questions about these two particular grants. And as it happens, there's a third that we just learned about, and that application is due at the end of the month. So can we throw a third in as well? Uh, you got to tell us what it is. Sure. It's a, a $500 non-competitive, non-matching grant. It's from the Winnie Bell Learned um, Fund, which the Ver Vermont Public Library Foundation manages, and it supports early childhood education. I'm going to get back on the soapbox because I haven't. I was good last year. I didn't. These little grants that we get, what does it cost us to get them and do the admin and, and whatnot? Have we had any conversation about when, like some of these are like $200 and we probably spend three, $400 to get them and administer them. Okay. Well, I think that's, some, that's perhaps some hyperbole, but the, I mean, I would be delighted if the select board changed the policy that requires me to come to you for permission to apply for a $200, $300, $500 grant. Um, at this point, I, you know, I do the reporting, I do the applications. They're usually about a 10 minute um, investment of time. So these small grants, they don't, they don't take a big lift, but they do provide um, some opportunities for us to do programming that we can't otherwise. Do. do they have to be invoiced for Amy? Does somebody have to invoice them for these? Yes. No, we'll we'll just get a check. You a check. We'll get a check for these. Yeah. You have to report. Well, not for the hundred thousand dollars. I wish I could say that. That would be lovely. But <laughs> the three hundred dollar and the five hundred dollar grant, they just they send us the money. You don't have to report what you did with it. Oh yeah, but it's like a one page web form that you fill out. So. The larger grants are much yeah. more well, I know, detailed but they, in terms of reporting. Isn't wasn't there a series of grants that are small that are all with the state libraries? Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they give out a bunch of them. They do them all individual. Yeah, it just seems like they could give once a year. Like here's these six grants. Here's one agreement for them. One process. Yeah, you know what I mean? It'd like, be nice. But you got we've <laughs> got a librarian lives. spending time doing that part. They've got a staff person spending time doing, you know, deciding who gets what and putting all these agreements together. It's like Yeah. This is ridiculous. Everybody's yeah. just yeah, chasing each other uh, around. Unfortunately and, I don't think that's in Amy's. Well no, yeah. but we could give some feedback to the state librarian of like yeah. get your act together. Yeah. Let's consolidate yeah. these things. I think that the the what you're running into is the rules that are handed down by the federal agency that distribute distributes federal monies to the state libraries. So mm -hmm. that would have to go to the Institute for Museum and Library Services. <laughs> I think even the state, I mean the state library doesn't want to administer these tiny amounts either, but they have to follow the rules that they are handed from the federal level. Where we feel pain organizationally, grants of all sides across categories are with the larger one, usually when you climb up in dollar value and they're reimbursement based. Yeah. And then we have to fight about the reimbursement with the granting agency about whether or not something's eligible, even if we've checked it ahead of time. We find this a lot on the revolving fund programs for water and wastewater. So then you're tied up whatever that local cash is. You want to be really good about those reimbursement cycles. The other place we get wackadoodled quite a bit lately are on pass-through grants. So when, when there's some sort of federal or state requirement, the money comes through the municipality and goes to somebody else, RACDC. Um, we got one that's in the mix with NEP or some, basically some water quality stuff that they're responsible for. 
um, any of these other entities, GMEDC, please come through us. We are on the hook because we're the grantee. So we get two years out and it's time to do our quarterly reporting. And we don't have anything, but we don't administer whatever it is. So we don't know how to fill in how many people participate because it's not our thing. But we're getting kind of the nasty grants from the state over and over. And now you're 30 days, so you're 60 days. And we've got to spend that time going out and chase them around, chase them around. And so even when we insulate the reimbursement piece in terms of requiring money up front or not putting town cash on the table, we still have sort of these long-term tails that really have become prevalent with some of these past It used to be, I mean, not when I was in back in the Essex example, we did a couple of pass-throughs with Cathedral Square for senior housing. It worked pretty seamlessly. This is 2010, 2011. We did it, we did some reporting, we held some hearings, we closed it out. And once everything was done, we had to go in once a year and just say, yep, it's still there basically. And now that's not necessarily all you have to do. Some of the reports aren't complicated, but then we get caught in the cycle. I mean, we've spent $700 to get back in compliance and staff time between me, ARC, and finance, for example. Well, that's not Amy's issue. Her grants don't tend to, to have those kinds of character tentacles. Yeah, but some of the bigger ones could. Um, so. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you that as I continue to look for funding to make sure that we can um, preserve the building envelope here by sealing up the cupola that's leaking into our attic, I've already secured two grants, one of which is federal money. And if you have never dealt with reporting on a federal grant, that's a treat. And I'm looking at going for three more. So I'm gonna be administering five grants. Hopefully I'll be administering five grants for that restoration project. So these $200, $300 grant, they, they don't phase me at all. The cupola restoration, that's gonna be a heavy lift. All right, so we have three Kimball grants and the request is to, these are all for application approval? Yeah. Right. You haven't received any of them yet? Okay. Um, I move the approval of. Oh, he got you. Hey, Tom. I haven't seen him finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to keep things moving along. Thank you. Oh, you got the camera ready? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, ready? I would like to move motion. Hmm? I would like to motion to approve the grant applications. All oh, look at that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. Oh, she carries. Okay. You actually. <laughs> 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 oh, I did too. I missed it because earlier. I'm going to get you another one. <laughs> 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 sure, sure. Thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Uh, you always remember your first, right? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Amy. Um, we move on to appointments. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, yeah. So this, the list that we had out today were the ones we do this every year. We go through. Are we going to? Are we? I'll go through the whole. Thing. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I thought we were just going to do them first. Is he on it? So there are two pieces tonight. One is um, you have an applicant directly for the Conservation Commission. So that's Jeff Thayer. You've got his materials here. There is a slot available. It comes to us through the Conservation Commission's channels. Everyone else you see on the list, there are um, a number of advisory committees that are out there. The terms are almost always one year in nature. Tom's got an update on arts and culture. We've tried to take out any of the ones that have disbanded, such as economic development. Um, and then you can kind of see in there. We generally will reach out to the chairs and or to the members to figure out who wants to be reappointed. Um, and we tried to highlight some of those in one copy. I don't know if you guys have the color copy too. No, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Maybe a copy of any of All right, Let's, uh, we'll just start working down through this and see which ones we can move tonight. And this usually takes us two or three meetings to get through, so don't. Yeah. Don't get too freaked out, because um, some of them confirm, some of them don't. It's like it's quite a process. So um, on the first page, the only one that we have, so we have certain committees that have a select board member on them, and so the first one up is the budget committee, 
and last year's member was Larry. You like that? You're muted, Larry. We'll let you decide which committee you want to be on, or you can mute, and we'll just appoint you to a bunch. <laughs> Um, as with with some of the various um, resignations, my 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 committee load has expanded dramatically, and I'd like to very much uh, share the that that those wonderful responsibilities. So, um, so um, what 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 my my personal preference um, would be for me to remain on the water wastewater committee. Um, we're we're in the middle of um, ordinance updates and and some other work which I would like to see through. Um, and um, and I was recently um, started working with the planning commission um, when uh, when Perry left, and I would very much like to uh, to continue with that since I just got started with it. Um, the budget committee I've kind of been on and off for the last few years. Um, Pat was doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it would be great if if somebody else would like to be um, the liaison to the to the budget committee, and. Um, and the rec committee, um, I've I've been the 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 liaison for um for quite a long time now, but um I I would be okay with um letting that one go. Um and I'm and I'm pretty sure um we actually have a member who is already on that committee. So that might be uh, uh an, an appropriate uh, uh place for that one to land. I may have okay. asked to take that place if that would be okay. Well, we're not to that one yet. Okay, Let's okay, go okay, these okay, in okay, order okay. so we don't get lost. Okay. So budget committee, we need a select board member on the budget committee. Any takers? I will take the budget committee. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Good denied. Denied. The yes. All right. So now um animal control officer milo has left but has done it for years so i assume she still is yeah. wanting that one she hasn't said she's not nobody we else we need to move each of these individuals well we need to go through them and make sure we're gonna leave those people on there okay. some of these they're not gonna stay um have on the sheet that you have have we gotten anybody to confirm on this page they want to be reappointed all the appointments? Yeah. No, like uh, the EC Fiber folks, have they say they want to stay? Isn't there a form we got to do for them? Yeah, now we're in the very early phases of yeah. meeting okay. to come back. So uh, animal control, I think we're good on. Um, emergency management, those three have confirmed. You sent us a separate communication. Yeah, that would come from two to two recommendations for three. We see that the director and two coordinators. Um, fire warden. Not sure we got anybody banging down the door to take over that one, right? Health officers. I think they usually let me know too when they're not, but it's still a good idea to get a confirmation that they are. And the health officers are a little different. Technically, you're making a recommendation to the park, to the commissioner of the Department of Health to appoint them. So there's a form that we'll have to get for whoever wants that, mm -hmm. or your viewpoint, or if there's somebody new. Yeah, and they haven't said they don't want to. So I'm fairly sure surprised. they're coming back. Yeah, yeah. they'd be surprised. Okay, so uh, so far it's the EC Fiber folks that we need to confirm, right? Okay, I'll look into that. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Mike Heldebrand and Matt Fordham are still in for the LEPC. Yeah, I can check into those. I can just reach out to them. No, I think they are. I was working with them on the emergency management stuff. Okay. They didn't want to do that too, which tells me they like it. <laughs> um, not sure we have, uh, have any of the others on here confirmed, or those are still up in the air. I heard Trevor really wants to be the... Yeah, not long. The ones we don't have people. <laughs> He's just dying to do more. <laughs> All right, so the rest of those we'll just need to confirm for yeah. next month. I can do that. I can confirm um, for next month. Arts Council, any... Uh, you want to still play on um, that one? They, um, I, will, I will speak to that. The, um, the Arts and Culture Committee has... Uh, determined unanimously that it wants to dissolve. Oh. And um, uh, it has functioned largely in an advisory capacity, having been 
on board at its formation and involved in its formation, its major accomplishment over the course of the last three years has been the mural project um, uh, on, on Main Street, uh, which went up last uh, year. Um, <clears throat> the feeling among all the current members, all of whom are representatives of a major arts organization in the town, whether it be uh, the Arts Bus or um, the Craft Center or the Underground Studio, they all feel that um, they, they um, can be more effective as, a, as an independent ad hoc committee uh, organizing um, and, and, and that um, they're not inhibited or hindered in any way by being an official entity of the town, but they just okay. feel um, so similar to what we did with the economic. Yeah, they can be folks. just as effective yep. um, as, a, as a volunteer uh, entity. And so um, I've talked this over with, uh, with Jenny Albert from the Arts Bus, who's the current chair of the committee, and I'm wholly supportive of it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, if there are projects moving down the line that require um, a fiduciary role like we had on the mural project, uh, I think we can take we can talk about that on a case-by-case -case basis. So. All right. Um, Conservation Commission, that's where we have a... Those are all confirmed. And Jeff's replacing the you know, say. He's not replacing anybody. He's adding. So... They're asking, right. was there a request from them to expand the size of it? I, I asked Jessman today, and she, I said, is he replacing somebody? And she said, no, he's making it nine. Oh, I, are they, were they formed as a nine? I count eight, so if there is that vacancy. I don't know, most okay. of them are seven to nine, yeah. seven or nine. We always have an odd number. She's, yeah. She said it makes them a nine. That's what she told me, makes them a nine. Because I asked who he replaced. Right, I think the question is, are they a nine normally? I, yeah, I don't know. Or are they expanding to nine? But given that there's eight, it would stand a reason there's nine. But. I think either that or we're going to remove one if it's seven or change the number to nine and add one. So <laughs> we might as well make it a nine and add the person. Yeah. Uh, that one does not have a board member on it, but I don't know that it needs one either. That's been an optional. If anybody's into. They're very the town forest and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that vacant ex officio, we really don't need. Okay. We haven't always had somebody on that committee, but um, but I think some of that's because Brendan's been very good about coming in and telling us what's going on when we wanted it, which works. I just checked with, I just checked with Jenny, who was on the Conservation Commission for a long time, and she confirms that it's a nine-member group. Thank you, Larry. Um, so. DR, the um, <coughs> Design Review Advisory Commission, this is the smaller group that looks at just the interchange in some of the Randolph Center area. And Jerry wrote me back and said he would like to continue on it. He doesn't know about Perry or John, so I don't know. And, um, we, and we have we actually ran into a little bit of an issue with the number of members and their ability to pull together a quorum and needing to run through that process and having to kind of run it just straight through the DRB rather than plug through pretty recently. I think it was more in an advisory capacity so far, so it wasn't. I have to double check the full yeah. parameters. But well, we this is just advisory. Yeah. Um, and it was created. It's not mandatory. Yeah. So. If we've only got one person on it, it may be we've always had trouble getting people on it. It may be time to just be in that one too. Yeah. The question with that one would be if they're referencing any the land use plans. That could be where they could be. Could they just be pulled back as needed? Just yeah, we have to go about through mm -hmm. amendment probably just say DRB where they were in and then just make that as an amendment. I mean that'd be that's just the thing to check. I I don't actually know. To uh, uh, amend the plan to, to just give it the perfect. It would be the zoning. Right. Yeah. It would be amending the zoning documents. Right. I don't think it's in the plan. It came out of uh, it came out of the when they wanted their own design control district up there. <coughs> That's interesting. And, I, would think um, would be. I know. It was the opposite of what you would expect yeah, in that you crowd. Would expect it in the village. Um 
and then the compromise was they would have an advisory role to the DRB and it was very well staffed the first term right and then nobody showed up nobody's we've never had a full pallet on this one so it wouldn't be surprising if it was time for that to go DRB we have uh, what th two up for renewal John Hart and Bill McGrath mm -hmm. have we heard from them yeah Matt wrote back to me today or he confirmed today when I talked to him that everybody was wants to everybody that needs to be well it wants to be and um so the I think what we we have some of these that are they're different lengths of time so we'll be extending them it's like a two or a three year span just so everybody understands like mm -hmm. if you have a problem with one of these appointments or want to mm -hmm. ask some questions just bring it up otherwise we're probably cruising well, it looks like they're making it's somewhere. like it's three three years right? yeah, yeah yeah and then with appointments generally when we get into this if it, yeah, at some point you want to hold on to something there is a mechanism to go to an executive session because there is sort of you can talk about the appointment or evaluation of the public official if you want to take any action we come back out into open session and make that and it very rarely comes up but it is a tool okay thank you um we have no alternates on that uh, Tom was on there ex officio, but we don't have to have somebody on there. It's I, up to you. I, I actually, it's an area of interest to me, so I'm happy. To You're good. This one, I think I, I stepped up when Barry stepped down. To that, so. All right. Um, East Valley Community Group, we have uh, new term dates on that, and the members have been updated. This yeah. one has a ex officio on it, if anybody wants that. I'll take that one. Trainer, you're stepping down. Oh. Trust me, Trini's time for this town and what I do, a, a committee is, you know, I'd love to just have one committee. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right, uh, Energy <laughs> Advisory Committee. You, uh, so I heard from Jerry Ward today and he said that Derek Seifer was appointed to the Energy Advisory Committee. Do you guys remember? I couldn't find it anywhere in the minutes. Not that I'm aware of. And Trevor didn't remember. He never forgets that anything. That doesn't ring up. No. So I, so I wrote back to Jerry and I said, I don't think that that happened. I don't recall it. I looked, I looked through the minutes. I searched for it. I couldn't find his name. And so I said, he's I would say if there's interest there, he should just express it. Yeah. I mean, we can, yeah. we can look at that, right. um, and, and this is but we don't have a functioning committee there right now, no. so we ought to be advertising that. To, right. We got one member. Yeah. Susan Mills is off. She wants a break, she's, right? Yeah, she's, she's, she doesn't want to step down completely, but she's taking a break. Should, should, should we just ask Derek to submit a letter of interest that yeah. we've always been doing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll see if I can, yeah. I can reach out through Jerry. Jerry. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, we're, Jerry's not part of that committee. Is he no, just helping he meets, us find staff? No, I think he meets with them periodically. Yeah, he's, he's he not on it, but he participates, yeah. Okay. We don't need uh, a there, right? Uh, well, it was Pat. Ah, uh, okay. I just, uh, for some reason, I didn't write it on there. No. We go back and forth. Yeah. If somebody has an interest and wants to be an ex officio, they can. If they don't, Keep that under <laughs> 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 All right, Planning Commission. Uh, Larry is going to stay on. We're looking for members. Yeah. Um, the chair and vice chair both resigned. <laughs> wow. Well, they they made Camden the chair when he wasn't at the meeting, and then he said, "Nope, no." Stuff up all again. Yeah. yeah course, I understand. Nicole, yeah. the General Sherman, wasn't he the one who said, "If nominated, I will not run. If yeah. elected, I will not serve." Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So. All right. So I think that That's one's good. We'll be advertising. Sunny step down too. Yep. Yep. Um, recreation. So there's so, hey. three people. Uh, well, Erica, you're. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the ex officio on that one instead of the. I just member? want to be a part of the board, but I'm slow at writing letters, even though I'm here. So do you want to be the ex officio? <laughs> 
Oh, happening. that's right, it's you. You say that, you don't want to... Sorry, I'm just, sorry. Not to create conflict, but I know. We, we've got a race. Yeah. Well, Larry said that he was willing to step. Yeah, right. Stephanie and Stephanie wants it. And Stephanie jumped up. And Stephanie, Stephanie wants, wants it. To do it. Oh. So. But Eric, you want to be. Uh, you can still yeah, be a I'm member of it. Okay. okay. I'm just gonna. You just got to remember it. that's it. You can't have another board member there. Or you got to advertise it, it as a board committee. member. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope. we don't want to tell you more meetings. I just want to put up Christmas lights in the bitter cold. Preferably when it's snowing and windy. All right. So. Uh, any concern with the other two members? Are the other two wannabe members? That's probably not a nice thing to say. Uh, <laughs> I know Erin does. <laughs> she just has to write her letter. They both sent their letters in. Oh, yeah. Or was uh, it pending letter? Is that they haven't sent the letter in yet? Or the letter's here know. for us to decide? Pending letter means they're writing a letter of it. They want to. That's what uh, I, a page wrote me today and said. See, oh, this, I, okay. I copied and pasted this out of her email. So this is Sheboygan we're trying That's to? That's from so, Sheboygan. Okay. Uh, if they get them in, we can actually act on those. Yeah. But Erica yeah. doesn't need to send a letter in. She's a known. In. She's a known. Who doesn't? Me? Erica. I get to be on it? You can be on it. As a member yeah. without a letter. Should we take a picture? <laughs> 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 so happy. Water, wastewater. Um, Larry, all these people... All the members willing to go another round? Uh, on the water wastewater? Right? Yeah. Yep. Is what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and we just got full there, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. So they're, they're all, I like the ones that are all the same, all the same terms, one year, excuse me. Uh, fire Operations Review Committee ad hoc. We probably ought to leave that on the table, but I haven't done anything with it for a year because I might have had my plate full. So, I don't know doing what. All right, I need to update those and get back Yikes. to the so for them. Not next week, but next week. That was good. Yeah, we can Anybody have any year. other ones they want to talk about on there? Entertain a motion to appoint those that we just said we were going to? So moved. That's when you use the soap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion <clears throat> carries. Other business? I don't have any for you. How about the manager's report? Uh, let's see what. There's not much happening. Yeah, pretty quiet. Pretty cool. well, holding on to your sand. In the office. So we, right we haven't had that for a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I, I, I think we are um, we're still working toward full staffing. The finance director's position is the one that remains open. We've paused that search just with all of the stuff going on. Even if we brought in somebody new, I'm probably the one doing all the math for this stuff anyway. But we've added some excess capacity up in that department to help us out from now until December with Anne LaPearl's going to move over from the clerk treasurer's office, help out in there. We have our consultant from Nemrick still two days a week with Cynthia that will free her up to do some other kind of higher level accounting based stuff. Plus Kayla who's taken on everything we've thrown out it from September until now. So we'll have more resources in there than we've had. So we should be better able to handle all of the stuff. Um, when those numbers get low in there, that's the things that we found were kind of hard to keep up with in particular, like the accounts receivable stuff. The things that didn't run on the regular cycles to keep the lights on the way that accounts payable, payroll, those types of things did. Um, so then there'll have to be some change in there um, that fits into some plan dates for retirement. We'll likely have some news in the coming weeks about some additional, at least one other retirement um, on the highway end of things. And we've hired somebody as kind of seasonal part-time. The idea is a little bit on the job training and we'll slide right through that continuum of service. And so for the newer members to only have that many positions to talk about and a staffing update is a really nice compact <laughs> place to be compared to say August or last. When it was easier to talk about who was employed. <laughs> yeah. It was maybe like there are still four of us. <laughs> um, so hard. But I think we'll have an update on, on some of the paving stuff that's happened. Uh, we've been constantly talking with the contractor. They did not provide us product that met our specifications. We did not accept the work. We have not paid them. They have been in conversations about how they're going to make that right. So once we have schedules and a better idea for the spring, 
it sounds like we are going to see that happen, but at no additional footprint in terms of the cost to us. So I know that one's come up as something that we haven't maybe done. It's just that we haven't been talking about it because it's a contract issue. And now we're at the point where we're probably going to start to schedule work. Um, so that is a piece that's out there. Um, the brand new jetter that you guys authorized that was very exciting. That was out in yeah, about today. If you saw something on a trailer, that was funny. yeah. Yes. And so they use that. It's basically a high pressure um, water based system that they used to clean. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know. Cleaning water waste Chris water stuff. Chris was excited about it. They all looked really happy. He was, was, <laughs> was in there too. Yeah. He was in Trevor's office and he goes, "Oh look, eggs at the windows." <laughs> right, yeah, at one point in the window, they were having puppies. There was Kim. There was John Shangra, the highway super, and there was Chris. And they were all looking out the window, watching the guys use the jet around. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Trying to think what else has been happening. We're just still trying to play catch up. There's been enough going on in the prep to the town meeting. The policing stuff was its own intense. So for the people that don't understand, we stood up a police department in five and a half weeks. Like completely unheard of. Yeah. And it took a lot of people and a lot of hours to do it. So even at the state level, they are like, you won't do this for Scott, at least three, not, four months. You're not on Indeed back there. Are you just looking for jobs? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. But it was not only town employees. There might have been an additional helper that did a pretty heavy lift, too. But, and it might be because she didn't want her husband home. <laughs> no, you need to. <laughs> but. I might just be because we normally have so much. Yeah. I might be forgetting something, but. You never forget. It could be that important, I suppose. You know, my yeah. lip is still a trap. Oh, it's me. It's so weird. Yeah. It's so bizarre. All right. Well, we have no reason for executive session tonight, right? So. And so I just to confirm the 23rd. Um, at 5.30, correct? Yep. For, uh, correct. Yep. For so another round. So does anybody uh, have a coin? I, I checked and it'll be 9.30. Anybody have a coin? Yeah. No. I think we need to flip a coin to decide which one of the newbies gets the first adjournment. Oh, Ooh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I have my quiet cup today. <laughs> it's your turn. Right, so I move to close the meeting. Adjourn. Adjourn. I move to adjourn the meeting. And I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Well, motion carries. <laughs> 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 <laughs>